Hello, everybody. Welcome to another and thrilling episode of the Ungrown Ups podcast. I am Ryan. That is Matthew. Did you just say in thrilling? I meant to say thrilling, but I enthralling, I think. But then I kind of yeah, maybe I hesitated. In thriller. In in thriller. This is episode seventy-one, otherwise known as the seventy-first episode. Pew 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 pew. Yeah, we're into the seventies now. Yeah, getting old. Yeah, yeah, we all. I mean, like if you were a person, you'd probably be ready to go to a home. Yeah, we're all facing our mortality. I mean, do you, I guess 71 might be young for some people. Yeah. Hey, Grayson, how old's old? Oh, yeah, Grayson's here. Hey. Mm, like 60. 60's old? Okay, so we're not old yet, so well, we're fine. I remember being a kid and thinking like 30. 40. Yeah, yeah 30, like 40 30 years. Old. Like Your parents are probably mid-30s. Probably at the yeah. time. Yeah, and you're like, like you're old. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. Do you look at your parents and think that they're old yet, Grayson? No. Not until I hear their age. Oh, well, interesting. Yeah. They just do you think like I still feel like I'm in a I'll be in a room with adults and I don't feel like an adult. No, yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Right? Like I'm like, oh, this is awkward. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> All these old people and you're wait, they're my age. Yeah, it is a little yeah, exactly. Or like even sometimes younger, honestly. Yeah. I think there's just some people that old souls. No, that no old- they're just weird. Exactly. Yeah. Old soul is just a nice way of saying you're you've got a weird personality. That's yeah, I agree with that. It's a backhanded compliment. <laughs> it's, it's it totally is. When yeah, you're, oh, totally you're an old soul. You're like, no, you're just a creep. It's just yeah. it's weird. Well, I don't know, creep. I mean, not everybody's a creep, but definitely an odd duck. Yeah, exactly. You're, Which is a weird expression, by the way. Odd duck. Is there even ducks? I don't know. That's why it's strange. I mean, I assume they mean odd in the like. But why duck? I don't know. Yeah, there, there's probably some story there that... I used we, to work with somebody that always used to say, oh, yeah, we've got to set the duck. What? Don't know. Don't ask. Uh, I mean, I finally was like, I'm sorry, what do you mean? And they're like, oh, yeah, we've got to get prepared. And I was like, I've literally never heard that in my entire life, and I will bet you money that, that is, you made that up. You I, made it up. It's not real. Either that or they misheard something like set the deck or something, and then they just misheard it, and then just never, nobody ever corrected them? Well, whatever it was, other people started saying it. Was English their first language? Yes. Okay. Other people started saying it, so I ended up looking it up, I and had, it did not exist. It's I, not real. I had a college professor that English was not their first language. Yeah. And it was a Photoshop class that I was taking, and there were so many things that you understood after a while what she meant, but when she was telling you to, to kick the puda... That means click the pull down, you know, and it's, oh. like, you know, so there was, what, what is the, what was their first language? Chinese. Oh, okay. So it was just, it was, pronunciation is hard when you go from like uh, Asian languages and the, the way that like even their, yeah, like the L sounds. Yeah. But like the way they control their mouths compared to how we do, oh, sure. I know that sounds weird, but it's totally proven. Like yeah. that's a thing. And so that's why I was just wondering if set the duck was no. that type of thing no. where it was just, they heard it, but. Nope. And then it just, it, it annoyed me enough that other people were using it that I proved everybody wrong. I had to, because I'm that guy. What did you do? Send out an email? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did. I went to urbandictionary.com and this is not like, exist. Listen, guys, I looked this up <laughs> yeah. on the internet and then my mom says that if I could prove it, I could leave the basement. It's not real. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, congratulations on surviving Labor Day weekend. I did. You survived all the, uh, the what was it, the international... F- what are they? I ended up going down to the International Festival of What Streets. do they call it? The Food Fest? No, it's the International Street Fair. Street Fair, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I ended up going down. It was. I went on Sunday. Towards the end of it? Like as things were winding yeah, down? Yeah, and it was like the hottest day. Oh, and yeah. it was empty, which was great. Oh, awesome. So I went down, met a couple of folks, had a couple of beers, came back, called it a day. Oh, nice. Yeah. It nice. wasn't like... It was nice because it was pretty empty, and then I wandered over to Chapman, as I do, and hung out with those guys for a little bit, and that wasn't busy there either. I wonder if it was just the heat? Or- oh, yeah. I mean, it was... That day was... Not only was it crazy hot, I think at one point it was like 108, um, which was funny. I opened the door to take the dog out to go to the bathroom, and the second the door opened, he looked at me like, the nope. fuck? I'm going to piss right here on your floor. Yeah, no, <laughs> so we, we went out right quick, and he... Uh, I don't know that he's ran up the stairs faster. Does he have, like, those... Um- dog booties those shoe things like um no it wasn't it was crazy because it was hot and humid but it wasn't the sun wasn't really out yeah so the ground wasn't hot it, it was, was just, just hot. hot yeah um and it was one of those it rained a little bit like we got just by virtue of it being so humid we got some rain um yeah I but saw it's like it. sprinkles because i was out in scottsdale yeah 
for the uh, for the weekend and i saw back here that there was rain and and people were showing like screenshots of their their weather app saying yeah. you know rain in the forecast well i think that's partly too why people stayed away from street fair i feel bad though for all the vendors the people working the grills oh just because those heat? are yeah because of the heat and nobody showing up because most of those are charities right right so if there there's nobody there they're not making any money but I was a little peeved. So it used to be you'd go down, you know, you show your ID, you get your wristband so you can buy a beer. Yeah. Right? Okay. Makes sense. That's standard. They're charging $5 for a wristband. Whether or not. And everything's cash only. Who's getting the five bucks? I don't know, but that seems excessive to own the privilege to purchase an overpriced beer. Beer. That's interesting. It'd be one thing if, like, they charged you five bucks for the wristband, but then your first beer was five bucks off. Like or they was- gave you a a glass or something yeah yeah or something right. for that five dollars but ooh, yeah it was weird that's interesting but i did learn uh something about the circle it's not perfectly circle it is circular yes I, I but don't know. uh 1886 it was turned into a park okay and it is the oldest parkland in orange county did not know that yeah i didn't know that either until today actually i was looking something and up. the park is literally the middle of the circle right yep, yep. yeah that middle of the circle is a park that's considered a park the original fountain is not that fountain. Correct. That fountain was put in in like the 50s, I yeah. think. The original fountain was moved to Hart Park okay. in like the 40s. And then from Hart Park, it went into storage for some reason, which is super weird. Who pays this store? I don't, I don't know. It's bizarre. But then that fountain got moved to in front of like the Civic Center or whatever that is. Okay. Um, and now it resides at the library. And the reason I looked it all up today was because we were on a walk this morning and we walked by the library and by the fountain. Okay. And it's just a, it's a cool looking old school art deco yeah. fountain. So I thought that's ah, pretty neat. Did it have a plaque or something next to it that you learned? Of- no, I knew that was the original fountain, but I didn't know how it got there. Oh. So I kind of looked up like, why did it end up there? Uh-huh. And I learned all this fun stuff. Wow. Yeah. You could be like a little tour docent to like for the city of Orange. You could be <laughs> I, leading like the old town Orange. I would not do that because my version nobody would want to hear. I, I would just it make might be the other way around. Maybe, but there's a. There, I noticed on the side of the library there is a QR code on like a traffic sign that's been bolted, okay. bolted to the yeah. building, and it's apparently a uh, what you just said. It's a tour of Orange, old town Orange. Yeah. But I, I mean, via QR, and I guess it's like self guided, right? But you I, could I do didn't like click a, it. A drinking tour. There is a, there's a food tour. Right. So just yeah. do the drinking one, and that's you true. stop by like three or four little spots around the circle and have a drink and tell a Take story. Take everybody to Paul's, and that's immediately where you lose them. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, nope. <laughs> and the end of the story is just all twisted. And you're like, what the yeah. hell happened? Yeah. I mean, maybe that could be kind of an interesting little. I don't know if I'd be a good tour guide though. You know what? We we. Did I was in Kyoto for for a weekend? I had a free weekend yeah. between meetings. Such a cool place in Japan, and we signed up for a tour. Like a, my coworker and I found some sort of like walking tour that was done, and it was all. Which part was it in? We in, we met up like at one of the shrines in Kyoto, and then we kind of it was a walking tour. Uh huh. And the guide was, I can't remember what I think they were, German or Italian, but they spoke oh, cool. English. Okay. And it was a it was. The, it was a free tour, but you were, you know, encouraged to donate towards the the tour guide. It was a weird thing, but Interesting. it was it was it's like tip him, but you don't have to, right? Huh? But anyways, it was it was fun in the fact that we could kind of steer the tour. Oh, cool! In the fact that like, yeah, we don't care about that. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go over here. So you was could, it just like was it just the three of you basically? No, there was like a probably about ten or twelve of us. Oh, cool. Okay, but because we were the more vocal Americans, we, yeah. <laughs> we got to see what we wanted. Sure. While the other English speaking people probably didn't. Yeah, see well, as much, whatever. But whatever. That area, um, it's over by. Like we walked through like where the geishas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what that area is called. Right. It's it's totally slipping my mind. But then there's the, like go back over the river towards I guess it would be the equivalent of the high street. Yeah. Where all the shops are. We walked all through those areas. So and- behind that is one of the best restaurants I've ever eaten at in Japan. It's called Hafu. Okay. Dude, if you go back, you were is- also the one that told me about the rocking chair. Yeah, yeah. Did you go to bar rocking chair? Yeah. Dope. Yeah. The guy that works there is like he's cocked their bartender of the year multiple times. Yes. In Japan. Good, and really good drinks. And apparently is an old Yakuza hangout. Oh. Yeah. It's good to know. The shady gentleman next to me. Told you explained that? Explained me. As all he rolls it. up his sleeves and Basically. shows all the ink. <laughs> yep. I was like, oh. And he's like, don't worry. It's fine. And like, then, you, then you you lifted your pant leg to show him. I your... had shorts and a t-shirt on. Oh, so, so he, he was just all... like, yeah. mm. he kind of gave me one of those. Yeah. Right? I, I said, okay. Yeah, you're like, no, 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 I'm not gangsta. I mean, I could be. 
If I need to be. I'd throw down. <laughs> I don't know. It's Over so, there. So convincing. It was it convincing? Yeah. I uh, can I can totally do that. Yeah. Run I need fast to. And all you motherfuckers. Uh-huh. That's uh, all you need to do is you don't need to be the fastest. You just need to be the second slowest, basically. Yeah, especially <laughs> when it comes to bears. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so, have to run outrun the bears, gotta outrun you. So you, you survived Labor Day weekend with the International Street Fair here. I in did, Orange. and it was you know, it was one of those weekends I parked my car. And didn't touch I didn't it. move it. Yeah. Um, that's probably the best way of doing it. I, I actually went to my sister's. I kind of just stayed out of the area for the most part and then ended up popping over on Sunday. Monday was just a lot of hanging out, getting ready because I flew out to Detroit on Tuesday morning. Right. So we left for Scottsdale on Friday afternoon. So after Grayson got out of school, we just went straight from school out to Scottsdale. I'm uh, making the assumption that you got all the traffic. Yes. So if you're at all familiar with Southern California, the, the, the 91 freeway goes east into like riverside and heads out to like palm springs and starts out like 50 lanes wide yes and there's there's uh toll lanes in yep. the middle of like basically the carpool lane yeah, is yeah. a is a toll that Did you, you can take pay. the toll road lane yes yeah, so i'm like okay traffic is gonna suck because yeah. it's you know 3 30 4 o'clock in the afternoon so i'm gonna go pay for the that's expensive it's like eight or ten bucks it was twenty dollars and seventy five cents because of the peak pricing yeah, because yeah. of traffic, right? Of, well, holiday too, right? And I was like, "All okay. right, this sucks, but I don't want to sit in traffic. I'm going to pay twenty one yeah. bucks basically to get into the I can't remember what they call them. The pro- it's the um, the something lanes, the, the toll lanes, fast track. Yeah, but they they have some weird local name for. It. But anyway, so they yeah, do? yeah. Oh, all right. Anyways, so, so I get into express. Th- yes, the express lanes, yeah, and so I, I pay and get into it, and it's going slower. Than as if I, I'm going slower in the paid toll express lanes than I would have been if I was just sitting in traffic. It sucked. Yeah. Oh, it's that's total BS. It was I hate backwards. That. Like yeah. I wish I had not spent the money, and I if I was just in open traffic, I would have gotten, I would have saved about, probably about 20, 30 minutes. No, because what would have happened is you would have done the opposite, and it's would have yeah. been the opposite. Well, what what screwed us was there was a Prius that had crapped out in one of you the... You could just say there was a Prius. Well, yes. Yeah. But this one was e-mobile, not just going slowly. Oh, nice. So the, it was getting towed onto the back of a flatbed, and so it was a So CHP. lane was blocked? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because the, the, uh, the express lanes are cordoned off from the rest of traffic, you oh. can't easily cut into the, the moving traffic lanes because you're in this kind well, of there's cones or right. not cones those are like ballers, pylons, i guess pylons yeah, yeah. The, the plastic pylons yeah. i guess you could hit it i mean people to. do there's oh. there, there's grips of them missing oh yeah and they have floppy rubber bases so i mean they're meant to like move but you just still don't want they're not meant to be like slammed into though no right anyway so we were trapped in the express lanes and it it added probably 20 30 minutes to our drive so once we get past that we keep going we're moving east we finally get into palm springs and once we get into palm springs traffic finally lightens up yeah. So it finally frees up, frees up. We're cruising. We're finally doing faster than the speed limit. Mm. And uh, drive's going good. And as we get into approaching Arizona, the skies start turning a little orange. And we start seeing signs about warning about high wind and dust storms. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. And so uh, we encountered dust storms. Cool. Which was then followed by monsoon. Perfect. That was actually pretty rad. That is pretty cool. Because you're watching all these lightning flashes in the in the clouds, right. but the lightning is just within the clouds themselves. They're, yeah, not, yeah. they're not hitting the ground. Those can be sketchy to ride th- or drive through, though. I've oh, ridden it, through one. It got sketchy. But, yeah. I mean, this is you're seeing it off into the distance as you're approaching it. Right. And, um, it's like a wall. Yeah, kind yeah, of. super cool. And it was all around us, like, at some point. But we were dry, and then all of a sudden we weren't. And just the downpour... Grayson, what do you think of the uh, the monsoon that we drove through? It's like um, if you ever go through like one of those, um... like car wash. Yeah, from yeah, a think, gas yeah, station. Yeah, that's it, what you go for. The shell one near our house, it's just like all the water just pouring down. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 we actually slowed down. Like yeah. we we were going maybe thirty, maybe twenty. Yeah, yeah. They get like I said, they're sketchy. I was going through. I went through one in uh, New Mexico. Yeah, and it was. It was rad because, you know, New Mexico has a lot of red rock and like it was bitching to yeah. see and like the lightning would flash and it oh, would light yeah. up the rocks. But exactly. it's still super sketchy. Super sketchy. Yeah. And then then once we, we we were in the monsoon for maybe 15, 20 minutes and then we were finally able to get past it. Yeah. And then we encountered another one. But again, that one was smaller and shorter. And then once we got through it, it was fine. But the the drive to and from 
Scottsdale over Labor Day weekend just made me realize how many people suck at driving on two-lane highways. All of them. They all hog the left lane just because they're going slightly faster than the big rigs in the slow lane. Right. But they but don't move over. They don't move over. I can't tell you how many cars I passed from the slow lane because they were camped out in the fast lane. You know, it's gotten a little bit worse, but the only place in California I've driven where for the most part people will move over yeah. is like the Central Valley, either on the 5 or the 99. People yeah. will actually move over. I think, yeah. And all you do is like they understand what the, the flash means of your brights and they go, oh, sorry, and they pop on over. Yeah. So I just got pretty good at just weaving through traffic, going around. Just, but it sucks to have to do. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. But I mean, I would pop over into the right lane and I would overtake eight or nine cars yeah. because there was that one car camped out in front that was holding everybody else up and then pull over in front of them, keep going. But I would be actively moving over into the slow lane right. all the time. Not to necessarily just pass people, but to also let people yeah, pass Yeah, because that's me. where you belong. Right. Yeah. But it's just amazing how frustrating it is. Like that that stretch of highway, that the the 10. Yeah, 10 is really bad. Would be much better if they just added a third lane. And they have the room for it. It's it's not like they don't have room on either side. And, and to me, it's, a, it's amazing because it is a major thoroughfare for lots of logistics, for like right. all the shipping and right. all the trucking. And you would think that, that would justify an additional lane because the right lane more or less is, is filled with big rigs in a little convoy that's trying to go the speed limit unless there's yeah. a big hill. And then the left lane is unfortunately stuck with people just camping out at the speed limit. Yep. Or, or they're going, hey, no, no, I'm, I'm going 75. So I, I deserve to stay in the left lane because I'm passing. No, you get in the right lane when it's clear. Yes. And you only use the left lane. It's, it's weird and it's hard. But it's, it's a passing called the passing lane. lane. Yeah. They, they don't see that. They see it as a fast lane. And they no. go, I'm going fast. Therefore, I belong here. Quite frankly, you are not going fast. No. I, I wish that um, the pit maneuver was something that you could do just arbitrarily. Dude, I have always wanted... I, I wish it was legal to have bull bars on your truck and be able to use them. Yeah. Like just a little punt. Yeah. Or if there was some Mario Kart type of thing, sure. you shoot a turtle shell at them. Or, or a, you know what? If there was a, if it was legal to shoot other cars with a paintball. Oh, I've done that. I've actually mounted a paintball gun behind the grill of a buddy's car yeah. and, and uh, wired up a um, little trigger. It was a trunk release solenoid. Oh yeah, sure. That'd um, work. And I wired that up around, around the, the trigger right. and then put a relay on his horn so he flipped the switch, and then he uses his horn <laughs> button, and it would shoot paintballs. That's awesome. Yeah. But the, yeah. the hard part was, is depending on your velocity, the paintball oh, may, not, may not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at, at low speeds, it was fine. At higher speeds, you were just spatting yourself with paint. Right. But it was a... It's still, the idea is perfect. Oh, yeah. The idea yeah. was awesome. The execution was so-so. Dude, <laughs> speaking of bad drivers, the drivers around here are getting worse. So I was coming home uh, just earlier. I was on the motorcycle and coming up Chapman towards the circle from the other side. And it, you know that spot where the lane, the right lane ends, it turns into a must turn It's a right. force turn right, yeah. Yeah. So right. I'm going, and there's this minivan next to me. Just parallel with you? Par like yeah. right next right to me. You. And all of a sudden, he goes... To, with about 15 feet left in that lane, huh. he goes to pass me huh. on the right and goes straight through that lane and almost rear ends the parked cars that are right. parallel parked, slams on his brakes and like almost takes out my rear tire. Huh. And I like, what the hell? And I slow down and I'm, you know, pull up to the, I had to stop because there were pedestrians and I full turned around, yeah. put my bike in neutral and turned around. I'm like, what the hell? You know, yeah. like this, he flipped me off. <laughs> Somehow like this is fault. my fault. Yeah. And this is not the over. first time. You know what's crazy? This isn't the first time this has, this has happened right now. Oh, no. People it, do it all the time. I see it happen all the time because I'm never in that right lane because I know it's a forced right. turn right. So but I'm always in like, the left. Okay. Your mistake isn't my, like, you almost killed me. Yeah. How is that my problem? Like, because, yeah. it was just weird. Like, people are, oh, man, it was pretty funny. And then the other day I was walking the dog and some dude didn't even pretend to slow down for a stop sign. Just blew right through it. It was like, nice stop, D bag. And yeah. he goes, boo. Like, whatever, dude. Yeah, it's what do they call it? Like the cager mentality? It's just the fact that they think they're in a car, they're they're therefore they're better. They can do than whatever they, they they can do whatever they want. Right. Yeah. So nice. while we were out in Scottsdale, the, the whole reason for the trip was was Birria. It's a Birria, yeah. And so the drive took a little bit longer than we expected. It was a it's on paper with no traffic. It's about a five and a half hour drive. It took us about six and a half hours. So it wasn't too bad. Mm. 
And we got. No, I mean that's actually in the grand scheme of things less bad than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. I mean, because of the fact that we could go 80, 85 on certain stretches of the highway, that that helped with with the traffic. But um, we get into town, and you know, we we went out there to to because of this one food truck that Jeanette follows, the the random AF Taqueria. Right. Uh, they were doing a first Friday uh, event in Phoenix. So on the first Friday. They do like some live music performances, like down the main drag in Phoenix. And you went to Phoenix. It was on the way to Scottsdale. You're passing through. Oh yeah, that's true. Right, and so and it happened to be a Friday. Right, and it happened and so, to be the first Friday, and Got that's it. where the food truck was, and we, we were there for the food truck. And so we parked and we get out, and just everybody's out on the street. It's ten o'clock at night when we get into town. It's like a little after and they're 10. still going. Yeah. It, oh, cool. The event goes to like eleven. Oh, okay. so we made it there just in time to get some of the food, but it's a hundred degrees out. Yeah. And it's 10 something at but night. But it's a dry heat. Uh, was it a dry heat, Gray? Do you remember? What was what? The, when we got out in, in Phoenix the first night on Friday night, when we got out and it was 100 degrees, did you feel like it was dry or was it hot? Or was it humid? Were you sticky? No, I wasn't sticky. Yeah, so I... All right, I guess it's a dry heat. Yeah. Because for some reason, I want to say I felt a little muggy, but it could have just been me yeah but um so we, we find the food truck and we go in order and we, we tell the guy joking like yeah we drove all the way up from socal from this so the guy's like oh you were the guy on instagram because we were joking on instagram saying we're gonna see you oh yeah, yeah we're yeah, driving okay. out so we ordered a bunch of food he comped our entire meal oh that's cool so we basically so you went back and ordered again no no we just, <laughs> i i had the cash out so i just put it all in the tip jar so i mean they got paid oh that's cool but that was super nice of them to uh to comp our meal yeah. and something is it, it's tricky eating dinner at 10, 15, 10, 30 at night. Well, wasn't it? T- oh, wait. I don't know what their time difference. Is there a time difference now? Or no. Not? And okay. so that was also on, on our mind. So we're, we're right. driving out there and it's like, all right, this traffic sucks. You know, we're seeing that we're going to get there. We were hoping to get there about like 9, 15. Yeah. And then as we're driving, we see the, the, the arrival time keep getting pushed back. The monsoon pushes it back even later. So we get into town about like 10, 15 is what it's showing on the maps. And I'm like, oh, shit. Does the time change when we cross into Arizona? And are we going to get there at 11.15? No. And the event's over. But no, because of daylight saving, it's right now we're on the same time. When you're driving through time zones, it can get so confusing. But what's hard is Arizona, we're on the same time with them Most part of, of the, the year. year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Arizona has, there's a spot where you can drive through. So it's Arizona. It's an Indian reservation. Indian reservation. In the Indian reservation is another reservation yes. that has a different. So you could go, that's one, two, three. It's like five or six time, time changes. Back and forth. Right. Crossing, yeah. Well, there's, I, I was somewhere, probably somewhere in Canada riding, I would guess, east. And I remember looking at my GPS thinking like, sweet, I've only got like an hour left of riding or something. No, maybe I was going west. It doesn't matter. At any rate, I, I didn't factor for the fact that I was crossing time zones. And then... And it was like two hours longer yeah. instead of like the hour. And I was exhausted to the point where I was like, I don't know if I can well, make it. So we had the whole panic for a split second. So we're like, shit, the only reason why we got in this car to leave tonight was because we knew the food truck was going to be there Friday right. night. Oh, but then are you going to miss it because of the time, time change? Right, 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 right. And then so like Jeanette's looking it up on the phone. And we're like, okay, the time change. Yeah. There's no difference right now. Well, we're if, safe. If your GPS is anything like mine, mine was confusing because it was giving me my arrival time. That's what it was. I was yes. going west. It was giving me my arrival time local. Right, to where not to where I was going, not to where I was. Correct. So it looked like I had less time to get there. It was ugh. Yeah. So after that slight bit of panic, then we yeah. realized, okay, even if we arrive at ten fifteen, the You're gonna make it. You're fine. We're gonna make it. Yeah. We we did, and it was great. And then we had plenty of leftovers because the food was heavy yeah. for ten thirty at night. Like right. it's one thing if you're drinking and, and you know, and out all night, but after being in a car for like six hours, six and a half hours yeah, and a lot. getting that And so then we, you still have to drive. Uh, we had to drive like another 20 minutes to get to Scottsdale, so right. it wasn't too bad. Still. So, yeah. And then uh, we didn't really do much in Scottsdale. We just kind of hung out. And then we There's went not much to do. Well, there is and there isn't. I mean, there, there's shopping. There's entertainment. There's yeah. stuff like that. But there's, ex- like, there's a lot of off-roading and exploring local. but Right, which yeah. we didn't do because it was hot as balls. Right. And uh, But we did. Grace and I went to the Arizona Commemorative Air Museum in Mesa, Arizona. The Arizona Commemorative Air Museum. Yeah, all right. And so it's like it's an like Air a, Force Museum kind of oh. thing. And so they have like an F four Phantom. They have a they had some uh, some Russian MIGs like on display. And they had a bunch of interesting like turboprop um, engines. And Grayson was really fascinated by the piston driven 
uh, engine cutaways. So these are the old... Like the rotary the, engines? Yeah, basically the old prop planes. Yeah. They would have like a 7-piston or a 9-piston or 18-piston, yeah, yeah ra- radial yeah, engine. Circle. Yeah, radial, that's the word. And yeah. uh, so they had some cutaways, and so we... They said, you know, talk to docent or something to sure. see in operation. So we walk over. Oh, and, and they would move? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. They yeah. flip a switch and the yeah. whole thing moves and it shows how the the, the intake, compression, ignition, exhaust um Well, it's crazy. They had works. to build those so that the engine wouldn't torque too, right? Oh, yeah. Like they yeah. had to balance the thing so it was like. It was fascinating to so see. Cool. And then they had jet engines out and they had those cut apart so you mm-hmm. can kind of see all that. So for some reason, I think Jake Grayson has, has kind of come into appreciating airplanes now because like we did the air museum in palm springs for the fourth of july he have really you been liked to lion we have it's been a while it's not i mean it's not huge it's it doesn't have huge. a ton of stuff but it's cool right the san diego one's neat or used to be neat right we haven't done that one yet so now grayson is obsessed with the sr-71 yeah things rad so science cal science center has one out front but it's a, not an sr-71 it's an a19 yeah. trainer right but it's the same same airframe same air yep. basically there's ba- yeah slight it's close differences. Enough. yeah so now we're, we're trying to figure out when we're going to go to the Ca- California Science Museum. Actually, so California Science Museum has that, and they have the shuttle. Yes. Which is way bigger than I thought it was. Um, but uh, the San Diego Museum, I think, does have an SR-71. So that's one of the things we're trying to figure out. is like Because I've seen the SR-71, I want to say, in Oregon at the Evergreen yeah, the, Air uh, Museum. Yep. Yeah, there's they, one there. Too. Where the Spruce Goose is at. Yeah, exactly. So That was not too far from my house. I used to ride out there all the time. Yeah. That was in McMinnville. Yeah. yeah, and uh, Jeanette's parents lived in Newburgh, Oregon, right. which was down the street, basically. The other cool thing out that way is it's more towards the... So you got to make Menville and then go towards Tillamook, where the old blimp hangers are. Only one of them is left standing. The other one burned down. Okay. And the, what's rad about it is the cement gate like that held the doors yeah. is still there. Okay. And, and it's cool to see them without anything. You don't realize how big they are oh, yeah. until you just see these huge cement pillars rising. It's pretty cool. I thought it was neat. They have a super guppy. Oh, is that the water dropping? No, no, it's one of those weird planes. Oh, yeah, that looks the, like a, uh, the cargo with the bulbous plane. front. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, that air museum, so the hangar that's still standing is an air museum. It's crap. Right. But uh, the Evergreen is dope. But there's some cool stuff. Yeah, the Evergreen. That one's cool. cool. But that yeah. one's also weird in the fact that they it's have a an, water park. Yes. Yeah. It's an air museum slash water park. Right. And it's like those two things don't go together. Well, but they do. Apparently they do. But it's like our Santa Barbara trip where we found that the taco place slash batting cages. Yeah. Right. right. So it's two. Great Maybe things, they shouldn't be together, but they work. But they work. Yeah. Well, the air, like that air museum, the tallest slide, or not the air museum, the, the water, water park, park, the tallest slide, I think, comes out of a 747 or something yeah. weird. Yeah. So it's, I've never been in it. I've just been by it. I've been to the museum. I've seen the water park, but the time of year we went, the water park wasn't running. It was closed. That's weird because it's it was, indoor. Right. But it was like a winter thing, I think. I don't know. Huh. So it was just fascinating. And uh, so Grace and I did the air museum. Grace, what do you think was the coolest thing that you saw at the museum? Um, Are you awake? Yeah, they had. Um, they were working on one of the plane's wheels, and they had the tire off, and they were letting us like see how big it is. Oh yeah, oh, that's cool. The, the The workshop in the back was was open, and it, that unfortunately wasn't climate controlled like the rest of the museum yeah. was. But they had the wheel apart, and the, the what, like what was it off? There, it was a um, big plane. It was a fifty. It was a. It was like a. Big. It was like a P fifty four or something like that. It was a weird plane, huh, that's but cool. it was um, the it's a beadlock tire, and the wheel comes apart. So like the actual beads right. bolt onto the wheel. That makes sense. And so they pull it apart. So that way, you, like one side is fixed, the other side comes off. So the entire tire slides off. Right. And they put it all back together. So they had the whole thing apart. They let Grayson play with the tire. That's cool. Like the unmounted tire, see what it is. Was and it good um, year. I don't remember what the brand was. But Goodyear made the space shuttle tires. Yeah, but what I found fascinating is the tires are kind of like just almost like car tires. Yeah, yeah they have different. Dim- right, but I mean yeah. like the, the sidewall information. Oh, like really? The dimensions. Oh, yeah. that's cool. I never noticed yeah. that. Yeah, that's so funny. That was kind of interesting. Imagine so, like you should call a tire shop. Hey, I'm looking for this. Yeah, and you're like, oh. They're like, wait, what? Yeah. Maybe it would be hilarious. Like Firestone's s- like, no problem. We got one in stock tomorrow. Is your 747 two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? Like when you go to AutoZone for windshield wipers. It's so weird to think that like those airplane tires take so much abuse, but none of them are driven. No. Yeah. Like you don't. They don't have much miles on them. And you assume that it is what taxes you. 
Yeah. I guess most people would think that, but, you know, the jet engine is your thrust. That's your propulsion. Right. So they just roll. Yeah, and so, break. so we did we did that and that was that was kind of that was a good what did we spend like two hours there like checking out all the exhibits and stuff they they had this one it was a like kind of a crude mock-up but it was like a seat with a a rudder stick and then it was going through some like parallel bars and then there was a flat tray with a small divot in the middle of it and it was a, a circular tray just almost imagine like a, a flat pie plate uh-huh. with a little divot in the middle and then like that, a marble and a marble, yeah, yeah, and okay. you had to move the joystick yeah. to get the the marble to center in, cool. in this tin. And uh, we were watching some guy do it, and he, it took him a while, but he got it. And then, did you go next, or did I go next? Me. And he, Grayson was able to do it, then I, I smashed his time, and then he did it pretty quick the second time. So it was like, once you figure out the routine, you can get it pretty good. Is it? Have you been to the, what, the cube? Yeah, the Discovery Zone? Yeah, so is that the one where, they used to have a thing where they had a big water tank, and there was a drone you could uh, like an underwater camera drone that you could drive. I don't know if I ever saw that. But what they had was like there, and I th- maybe it wasn't this museum, but I I've done it before. So it's like this huge area of like a slick track kind okay. of. It's like a polished cement. Yeah. And they have this chair that you sit in that's basically air, like air boosted. Yeah. And you have to maneuver. It's it's what they use they use to train astronauts. And you have to maneuver, and you're kind of tilted that up towards the ceiling. familiar. And there's lights, and you have to basically like aim your light at that light, and then chase the next light. Oh, and you're constantly like adjusting. It's sort of like yeah, it was super interesting, but you're gliding because it's on it's on a air yeah. jet, and the air jets move you around. And that's kind of the same idea with this little like rudder joystick right. control. Is like you're you're moving these parallel bars, but you have some linkage in between, so there's some slop in the linkage. Right. And then you're obviously there's a little bit of a, a delay in response as you move stuff to get that marble centered. But it was kind of an interesting. That's like, cool. That was the f- most fun part of the whole museum. That's awesome. And it was just something that you know one of the docents just like slapped together. It looks like, like, looks like somebody built it. Yeah, yeah totally, but cool. it, it was totally fun. That's and then funny. The, uh, the next day, I, I tried to get Grayson to go with me to the uh, the Martin Auto Museum. That would have been fun. And that's in, uh, that's in like Glendale, Phoenix. Uh-huh. And it's a interesting collection because there's nothing spectacular about the collection. Like, what do you mean? I mean, there's a bunch of like vintage cars, yeah, like the old Corvettes and sure. Camaros and Oldsmobile 442s, and it's just, just kind of normal, just like a bunch of normal collector cars. Yeah, but the coolest part was was everything except for like maybe five cars. You could open the doors, get inside, open the trunk, open the hood, they let you in them, and That's every weird. single car except for like there was three aluminum bodied cars that they didn't let anybody in, and there was like two other cars that were like roped off but everything else you could get in so it's more like going to an auto like, show yes but with vintage cars yeah, yeah yeah and but the cars again like the collection was just a lot of like muscle car era stuff like There's a lot some of cool 60s. stuff back there but then they had um cars that i i never seen you know really much in person before like cadillac there was a sub brand of cadillac back in the day that I, I never really knew about. Hmm. And um, it was a LaSalle. I've heard of those. Right. But yeah. I never really seen a LaSalle. Right, right, sure. And it was supposed to be like a, a less, ex- I want to say like it was supposed to be like a feeder brand in the Cadillac. Right. So it was premium, but not as premium as Cadillac. You remember and, the Cimarron? Yes. <laughs> but the they had them on display and, you know, I got to go climb inside and sit in them. And it's oh, just cool. That amazing. steering wheel's rad. Yeah, well, the steering wheel is huge, like yeah. diameter wise, but then the 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 wire wheel like that—that's really cool. The spoke is super tiny. Yeah, I got to sit in an Oldsmobile four four two. Those are rad. Did it have the hood on the t- uh, the tack on the hood? This one did not. Yeah, but those get stolen a lot. There was like old like Country Squire. They had uh, road. That's, you know what? That's something automakers need to bring back: the hood mounted tachometer. Well, I remember uh, my aunt having a Dodge Dart, and it had hood mounted turn signal indicators. I remember those. So instead of having the turn signal indicator blinking in your gauge cluster, when you had your blinker on left or right, there weren't any in the gauge cluster. Yeah, they the were hood. out on either corner of the yep. hood. I remember those. They're also, remember they used to be, it wasn't just the tax. They had, some cars had like oil pressure and other yeah, gauges. Yeah, other performance on the, gauges on the, outside. Yeah, on the hood. But that was a, a factory option. Yeah. So, I mean, that was the most fun I've ever had in a museum only because of the fact that I could actually sit in a bunch of cars. That's a trip that they... You I, I, I sat in a old uh, De Tomaso Pantera 
Um, they had a bunch of stuff. So again, like nothing like super exotic or super rare. But that's still like but it's unprecedented. Yeah, I, that's really cool. It was pretty fun. I didn't. I mean, I'm gonna have to go check it out. Maybe it's that'll be a, a winter time motorcycle destination. It's a ten dollar admission, like oh, donation, cheap. super cheap. Yeah. The uh, it it was in a they they just moved locations. Like so they they're they've been in this building for less than a year now, and it looked like it was an old like grocery store. Or some sort of old department store. Yeah, just um, a big box. Big, huge box. Yeah. They did new polished flooring, and then all the cars are just parked inside, huh. and it's got, like, the drop tile acoustic ceiling. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then a bunch of, like, neon signs along the perimeter. It's it's basically, Weird. like, some dude's car collection that used to have in a barn. And but he's now, just like, check it out. And, yeah. Huh. And a, I guess it's a, a party venue now, too? Yeah, the, a lot of these places are, right? So as I was walking out, I mean handle the microphone potentially. Uh, the one down the streets they do parties there yeah so yeah. i was the, the museum closed at five and so i was walking out and a bunch of people were walking in right about five o'clock for a party mm. so it seemed interesting yeah that's cool but the fact that you like i mean they had kids just walking into the cars and playing with it and stuff it, oh could you imagine like i mean obviously he doesn't care but, but i guess imagine? the cars again aren't that rare so but it's they're rare or not it's like there's Stuff that you spent time to collect, and, yeah. and I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure some of those cars are pretty rare. Well, and I, I'm sure the ones that are, are the ones that are roped yeah. off. Well, and there's got to be some of those cars that you know, like all those old cars were built to order. So I'm sure some of them have weird option packages and stuff on them. Yeah, some of them, like you, you know, they had window stickers. Like this one, this oh, that's cool. This Cadillac has five thousand original miles on it, and it was like a 1971, you know, something yeah. or other. And you're like, oh, all right, all right. So. On another thing on the motor, we're talking about cars, uh, motorcycle on the way back. I pulled up next to a, uh, a Cobra, AC Cobra. Okay. Right. Uh, at a light. A kit car? Yeah, well, I said, hey, man, nice car. Which, what is it? Is it a factory five? Is it a, goes, yeah. it's not a kit. And I just went, sure, buddy. And just <laughs> took off. It uh, very much was a kit car. Oh, yeah. And the guy was like, it's not a kit. He was so upset. Uh -huh. yeah. what, what is but it's it? very clearly a kit car, and you have a temporary plate on it. Oh, yeah. You have and it's a kit car. I can see it. It's not even a 427. Oh. My my buddy's got a uh, Superformance. I uh, think that's what this was. Yeah. And, and it, was like, it was painted kind of a cool, not quite matte, but like a... And I, I think with the Superformance, they have the ability to continue the VIN numbering scheme from... Like, they're a Shelby licensee. Oh, okay. And so maybe that's why he's all indignant about it being called a kit car because it's like a continuation. But I hate to break it to him. It's a reproduction. It's a car built out of a box. It's a kit car. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't build it, so maybe therefore. Well, it's he, not he his kit car. Right. He clearly is mechanically inclined. Uh, it was just funny. Like I, I was like, okay. I was on my bike. I was like, okay, cool. And the light turned green, and I took off. Interesting. He wouldn't let you sit in his car. <laughs> but it was cool. It was like a like a a mat like dark gray dark silver kind of color all right but it looked cool in that car because yeah, the, yeah. the back the way the shape is it worked all right guy was a dick but it worked so keeping on the car theme grace and i got to see a car accident the other day that's not ever good grace what'd you think mm. you saw it happen yeah it happened right in front of us oh it we, we i had picked him up from school and i had to pick something up for uh for dinner um and so we stopped by the local shopping center Went to the grocery store, grabbed something. As we were leaving the shopping center, I'm at the light, and I almost watched two cars plow into each other, which would have then hit me. Oh. And Grace and I were talking about it, and we're like, oh, man, that driver just didn't yield. Yeah. It should have. And then so we were chit-chatting. Then the light turns green. We make the left. We're driving back towards our house, and there's two lanes. We're in the slow lane, but there's a bunch of cars parked along the curb. So the, the Cadillac Escalade in front of me is to the left side of their lane, but they're still within the lane. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just giving room to clear between them and, and all the parked cars. I wish more people would ver, would uh, air left. Yeah. Everybody airs right. Why? Yeah. So they, 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 had, they were moving left to the lane, and we were behind them by about 150 feet. Yeah. And we were passing through a, I guess a, a, you would consider it an intersection. It was like a, a T intersection. So our direction of travel, there's no stop signs. But the, the street that tees into it has a stop sign, and somebody was what? there. Tees or stops anyways. Well, right, for yeah, that person, right, right. yeah. And um, they were making a left, and they turned left right into the side of the Escalade in the slow lane. How do like, you do that? They turned, they went left, but they went wide. And so their front right bumper corner of the car crossed the line, 
but their wheels oh, didn't. Oh, I see what you're saying. And so they, they, they swung slightly like a foot and a half too wide yeah, yeah. in their left lane, hit the Escalade, and when they hit the Escalade, the front of their car then popped left, which made the back of their car hit the back of the Escalade. Nice. And they went over the center divider, and you know tires blew out and everything like that, and they both pulled over, and Grace and I saw the whole thing. So, of course... Did you stop? We stopped. Okay. We got out. We checked at the drivers. Uh, both women were fine. Uh, the It was a Mustang Mach-E that had plowed into the uh, the Escalade. And so the Mustang driver was like, I didn't see the other cars. Like, was there no stop sign? And they're like, no, that traffic doesn't stop. There is no stop sign. You stop. You're supposed to see if there is. Yeah, if that's how a clear. key intersection works. Right. Yeah. I mean, there are the few three-way stops. Right, but usually they'll tell you. Yes. Cross traffic stops. The, yeah. Three the, ways, whatever. Yeah, this, this one doesn't. And, and this intersection is kind of tricky because... There's an apartment complex on the right side of the street, so there's a lot of cars parked on the street. So visibility if isn't great. If you're at that stop yeah. and you look right, it's hard to see oncoming traffic because of all the cars parked. And I don't know if this Mustang driver just didn't look closely enough or assumed that there was a stop or something. But anyway, so there was an accident. And and uh, it was interesting to see Grayson's response. Like the, the fight or flight, like he's like, I, I want to go home. You're over it? He didn't enjoy it. You did not enjoy your like, experience. I, I think it scared him. Like it startled it's him. Scary. A little bit. It's scary. Yeah. to see a car wreck. I mean, but it wasn't a, a catastrophic wreck. I it mean, doesn't, still, it's like no oh, airbags that's a deployed. That's yeah. a thing. You know that can yeah. happen, and you don't know when it could happen. Right. Have you ever been in a car accident? Have I? No. Has he? Oh, no. Well, other than go karting. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. Right. But yeah. So then, uh, so I, I, I checked the ladies, made sure they're all right, and I said, hey, I saw the whole thing. I gave him my name and number. I'm like. Do you guys want me to call 911? Do you want me to hang around? Yeah. And they're like, no, we got it. We're good. And so then uh, we head home. And then uh, a couple of days later, one of the uh, insurance adjusters or whatever Called calls me yeah. to get my uh, Your my take. my take on yeah. it. And I, I I went to Google Maps. I screenshotted the intersection. Ooh, I, did I you drew draw a little ah oh, look at you <laughs> I diagram. Had a whole diagram. That's funny. And uh, and I and I emailed I emailed it to the lady. And she's like, oh, thank you so much. This is awesome. She was the uh, uh, insurance adjuster for the Escalade driver. Oh, okay. Because uh, the Mustang driver was claiming that she wasn't at fault. And I was like, she, honestly, I mean, she was I the think one. That somebody that drives an Escalade is probably at fault for most things. But I mean, if you if you're the one with the stop sign, no, I know. I'm just you're sure. the one that has to make sure the traffic is clear. You're the one that needs to make sure that when you're turning, you're you're not turning into traffic. So, I too saw an accident the other day. Oh yeah, did you stop? Oh, kind of. So I was walking uh i went down to oh you weren't even driving you were no, just a pedestrian i was taking out the trash yeah and or no i was going somewhere i was getting ready to get my truck was, but i had to take out the trash and okay the guy across the street drives this really shitty long bed the round body f-150 okay right but i mean long bed yeah and there is not enough room for him to park where he wants to park oh, was he trying to parallel park no he was parking like so there was a super it's immediately across the street there was a um, cross track in the middle okay Right. And then between the cross track and the driveway, there just wasn't enough room. Okay. So this guy's back and I mean, I'm watching him. He's doing it like 50 times. My one thing, I should have taken my phone out and recorded him. Yeah. But I didn't. And he keeps trying to back up and then he backs into the Subaru and pushes it. What the hell? And then pulls forward just enough that he, and he gets out and he looks and I, I dump the trash really quick and I come back over and I'm like, Hey, you know, uh, you know, you hit that car, right? He goes, yeah. Bullshit. I didn't. He starts arguing with me. <laughs> and I was like, I watched you do it. And yeah. he starts yelling and his, but his bumper is kind of bent a little bit. Yeah. And there's no, the license plate on the Subaru is bent. Yeah. And I was like, you hit it. And he starts arguing, arguing, arguing. I was like, I literally watched you move the car. Yeah. I was like, dude. And he's like, I did not. And he's like some older guy. And he goes to go to his house. And he's like, that's a pretty dick move, dude. Yeah. You're not even going to leave a note. And he's like, yeah. I didn't freaking do anything. I was like, okay. So. I went, like, I got his license plate number and everything, and I happened to have a piece of paper in my car. I wrote the dude a note in the Subaru and stuck yeah. it in his window, and I saw him, actually. The Subaru guy? Or yeah, the truck so guy? he, the okay. Subaru guy, he turns out he lives in this apartments across the street, Yeah. and I saw him go, he was at his car, and he grabbed the thing, looked at it, and started to walk, and he's like, hey, man, I just want to let you know, like, yeah, I, saw I wrote that. you the note, this is what happened if you need anything. I don't know if anything's, like, damaged, but yeah. still, dick move. Totally. And the guy's like, yeah, that's pretty messed up. Um, and then I saw the, the old guy again, and I was like, so do you admit that you hit the car? He's like, I fucking didn't do it. And he starts, <laughs> I was like, whatever, dude. Like, you, I was like, how, I just how, said, I will never park anywhere near you. You're a prick. Yeah, but I mean, how could you be in so denial? I mean, 
he did he moved the, the car, other car. Yeah. there's no way he didn't know that happened interesting like you you yeah. went through where that car was parked right to move it so right. that you had and then room denied to fit. that yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I, dude, it's it's amazing. But <laughs> I don't get it at all. But I did see our out. I got to drive a. Well, let's back up. Okay, we're backing up. I saw a bunch of Rivians today. Yeah, you four did. four of them in a parking lot. It was some sort of like three of them the same color. EV meetup. I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing they met for breakfast or lunch or whatever at that cafe out Silverado. Okay. Uh, but there were four of them parked there. Three of them the same color. One of them, the license plate said green R1S or R1T. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Thanks for labeling your car. EV owners are the worst at no, I think just, plates. There's no, so no. many cars that are that are labeled, it's, and then they have the license plate frame that says what it is again. Oh, I know. I hate it. Yeah. Like my Lex, and then it's like the license plate says Lexus RX350. Yeah. And well, you're like, right. Oh. I mean, the EV people are like oil, LOL. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I was going to say. With the EV owners, they're just so smug with their environmental like commenting on their plates and yeah. it's like like the prius owners when the prius was a hot new thing they did that it is cool to see more r1ts i have not seen an r1 yet uh s, s. on the road yet the suv yeah i guess they're out yeah they're out they're being delivered yeah uh, which is super cool kind of makes me wish i had kept my deposit really oh yeah i would have flipped it there's already a bunch of launch edition t's on that are being flipped and they're getting some decent money. Yeah. That, which which baffles me. Totally. Because, like, why wouldn't you just be patient and wait because a it's, year and save, like, a hundred grand? People aren't patient. But that's... It, that Especially just sounds me. around here. Well, yeah. Because, I, I mean... want it now. I've seen so many first edition anything, like the Broncos getting flipped or yeah. the, the Hummer EV getting flipped right. or any of these kind of hard to come by electric vehicles or just any vehicles in general that are hard to come by people are trying to flip them or it's the dealers that are doing like the the outrageous i think some of the markup. i think some of them aren't necessarily private parties flipping them i guarantee you some dealerships put employee names on the list to oh, get yeah. one and then flip it that way do you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah to get people. around yeah yeah i um but i mean yeah i you know i could have flipped it yep and i wouldn't have been mad about it I could have flipped my Bronco that I had on order too, but the problem, like with my luck, it, everything would have gone back to normal immediately before. Right, right? and you and would have sold it, and nobody would have wanted it. Yeah, and I'm stuck with a very expensive vehicle. Um, but I did get, so I have yet to drive an R1T. Neither I really I. want to. Yeah. So if somebody's listening uh, and they would like to let me drive it, I've I don't necessarily some, want to go to Rivian. I've seen some on Turo. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you're really, they probably want all the money though. Maybe. But I guess I for a know. day it wouldn't be bad. Yeah, you, but... There's one across the street. Really? Yeah, I haven't been able to flag her down, and I feel kind of creepy trying. Yeah, I had a, a friend buy a Hyundai Ionic uh, 5. I like the other one better, but okay. So, I like the Ionic. Like, it l- looks cool. It's it's kind of got that 80s pixelated kind of... It's so funny. I like the Kia better. I, yeah. I like the little duck bill. I like the Kia interior, but I like the Hyundai the exterior. exterior. Yeah. Anyway, so she has the Ionic 5, and she said she was weirded out because some dude was following her yeah. in a parking lot to ask her about the car. Right. But she was like, do you not realize that I am a single female, right. and you're this older dude that's... And he he probably was totally innocent about totally it. Totally innocent about but it. But it's, it's like, still weird. Yeah, so yeah, she yeah, kind of yeah. called him out on it. like, hey, right. I'll answer your questions, but... That, don't do that again. Don't, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so when same the, thing with you. I mean, you're interested in the truck, but I'm not going to be a creep, right. dude. When the when the WX first came out, our shop well, I had a yellow one. Okay, you know, O2 WX so 2001. Yeah, had a yellow WX. I drove it home the first night we pulled it off the truck, and the same thing happened to me. Some dude followed me, but they blocked me into my driveway. Yeah, and I got out like ready to go because I was like, "What the f?" And I didn't think about I'm driving a car nobody's ever seen. Yeah, but still, it doesn't... right? But so anyway, so that I, I get that, but I'm also a guy, so it's a little bit less less weird. But anyway, so have yet to drive an R1T or a Rivian. So I mean, maybe we should have Lie- Lieberman back on and have him bring his truck with him. Oh, he that... might let you park it for him. Uh-huh. You, you know, valet it. No, I just want to like crawl around in it through the gear it tunnel. Sure, I don't know if I'd <laughs> fit. Um, and anyway, so I did get to drive the new F-150 Lightning. Your brother-in-law's, right? Yeah, my brother-in-law got his truck, and honestly... When did he take delivery? 
he got it, I think, like two weeks ago now. Okay. Um, they drove it down from Sacramento for him. Oh, rad. Yeah, so his cousin... They just sold their Ford store, but they own the Ford store in, um, it's not Sacramento, technically, it's... Uh, Some suburb up there. Yeah, okay. and if I told you, you'd be like, oh yeah, I know where that is. Yeah. So anyways, um, something with an animal name in it. Elk Grove? Yes, Elk Grove. So wow, they, they had sold... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think it's probably the only animal name near Sacramento. But they, they had just sold their store right after his truck went on order or whatever, but okay. she's still working. Anyways, long yeah. story short. So instead of them shipping it down, they just drive it down. All right. And they brought it down for him. I think it's got like, at the time, had 400 miles on it, maybe okay. or whatever. And so he got it, was driving it a couple of days. His frustration is that he doesn't have a fast charger at his house yet. And oh. so he's already had some bad experiences with Electrify America. Oh, yeah. Which, whatever it is, he'll get that all sorted out. The charger just hadn't shown up because yeah. you got a platinum and it comes with a charger. Right. They, they just, but they it. ship it from a third party. Yep. So it's like, hold all it. All that logistics. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, so um, we went and just ran an errand or whatever. And then we were going to pick up lunch and he had me drive it. And it's, it has, he had one pedal turned on. I hate it. Yeah, I'm not a fan. It actually freaked me out to the point I almost backed into another car because oh. I like panicked and didn't know what the hell was going on. Yeah. Um, but whatever, that's fine. The thing is, it's fast. Oh, yeah. But it's impressively fast from a roll. But it's also like, it's a massive vehicle. Like, does it? But it makes it funnier. But it, it, it just, makes it hilarious because of how big it is and how fast it is. It's stupid. But you know how bad drivers are. So then it's just like you're, you're, well, yeah. you're giving something with immense power and speed capability and something that's massive right it's just like oh but it is it's cool and it's so nice it is head and shoulders nicer than the nicest f-150 and f-150 has gotten pretty nice yeah but this thing is like a little bit different materials different textures a lot of really thoughtful features um i actually the, the i love the bed scale it's got a lot oh, of really, yeah. just a lot of really cool stuff yeah um yeah dude i love it i mean it is a freaking rad truck the ac works awesome the frunk is not as big as I thought it would be. I had this impression that it would be, and it's apparently huge, but I thought it would be deeper. Yeah, but I mean, there's still like a conventional 12 volt battery in there, and there's some like AC stuff. Well, sure, but so, I just thought, I mean, they're yeah. they're all like that, right? But right. everybody had talked about, oh, it's the biggest frunk I've ever seen. It's big. Yeah, but it's not lucid big. I do like that there's a drain hole, so you can use it as a cooler. Yes, I mean, so Ford has definitely perfected the art of some of these kind of low cost additional perks perks yeah. but have a big impression right right so adding a drain plug into the frunk probably didn't cost all that much but the impression that it makes it's practical i can hose it out i can yep. use it as a cooler awesome i already have load leveling suspension oh let me add a ui that mimics yep. a scale so right. you know how well you're loaded down right. like some of those things are just kind of it's smart and yeah. it's not like it's not like hard to do, right? And it, but it's cool, and it's maybe a few dollars of additional cost. Right. But the perceived value for those features is like hundreds or thousands of dollars, and therefore it's like, oh, this justifies my eighty nine thousand dollar truck, right? You know, or whatever it may be. But the one thing that was kind of weird, like the UI seemed on the screen seemed like it was a. I do like that there's actual buttons for a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's still mostly normal Ford sync. Yeah, yeah. but the the UI is a little slow. Like it it. Takes a second in oh, yeah. some some cases. I played with a Mach E. My neighbor has. One, oh, okay. And uh, I wasn't impressed with the UI because I felt the same thing. It, it felt like it was just taken out of a regular Ford, and right. it wasn't as snappy and as fast as I expected. I, I have it a to feeling be. though they'll uh, over the air update some of that and it'll fix it. Maybe. Maybe. But at any rate, yeah, whatever. There was a few little like one thing that I thought was kind of cheese that Ford honestly spent ten more minutes and you could have sorted this out. Every different screen had a different colored car. Or different color truck yeah on the screen like why couldn't you just color code the truck to what you actually have oh yeah, yeah right but it wasn't like they were all white like one was white one was blue one was like so that all the screens have a different color interesting I, the dash itself is all digital now yeah. i don't know if that's the same in the regular f-150 when you change drive modes when you change drive modes the the whole cluster it changes, changes. Yeah. yeah well you can actually just individually not with just with the drive modes on the lightning you can decide what your cluster display looks like right and they have one that's you basically have like a just, simplified yeah just a speedometer and yeah. whatever else and it, it honestly it drives better than any other f-150 it it's, handles great it, isn't it because it's the got, ride quality is good it's got spring rear suspension right it's not like a leaf it's a it's not a uh oh it might be i didn't look. i think it's independent rear suspension because of the battery 
So oh, that makes that's sense. That's why it handles and writes right. much better than a regular F one fifty. Right. Well, yeah, that actually makes total sense. Yeah. But it was it was great. I, I'm. It was. I mean, it's you know, it's a all wheel drive. Do you want to say anything about electric cars, Grayson? You are not really adding much to this conversation. Do you want to let us know that uh, Rivian announced a partnership with Mercedes? Yeah. How many how many shares of Rivian do you own, Grayson? Mm, five. You don't know. This is a smart investment over here. He smart investor, I should it's, say. It's fractional ownership, so he just knows how much money he has in, in oh, Rivian, but not necessarily how many shares. He's got, I think, two two shares. It depends on what dollar figure you bought him at, because uh, yeah. They he's, were really up, expensive for a while. No, he, we bought him towards the bottom. Oh, okay. So well, with the with the latest doing, announcement, doing he, better than some of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't listen to the ungrown ups for stock advice. Let's, no, but you know what? If you're making a long term investment, that's a it's a good one. I actually invested in a company that does um, psychoactive research for veterans. Okay, to treat like PTSD and stuff. That's all I got. Interesting. How'd I'm literally f- not going to give anybody advice. I started doing research on looking for something, some kind of investment. And I know, like, was it psychosilbalin or whatever it's called? All right. The mushroom stuff. Okay. It's There's a, a, a lot of promise in that research, and there's also a very real possibility so that you, it becomes federally legal very soon. Were you on it when you researched it? No, no, no. Oh, okay. San Francisco actually just decriminalized. So uh, did Oregon. So, yeah, yep, Oregon. So that's federally, they're thinking that that'll happen pretty quick, especially for medical. I'm thinking. And so that'll be. Big. Marijuana will probably be federally. I think they'll probably be close to, close to each other as far as like one on each other's heels. But the Mercedes announcement, yeah, so that popped the stock up a little bit. Yeah, so basically Rivian and Mercedes announced that they're going to co-develop some vans, I guess? Or maybe it's Mercedes vans with Rivian architecture? I think that's what it is. I maybe. think it's Mercedes vans that'll be underpinned. Yeah. So, but that's good news. Yeah. I saw, I mean, I think we talked about this. I saw the Amazon doodad. Oh, the uh, the Amazon Rivian delivery truck yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're interesting looking. I, you know what's weird? They're kind of skinny. Yeah, they're kind of tall. Really tall. But there's a lot of thoughtful features. Like when once they're pointed out to you, you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh, no, I, right. I totally agree. It's just a slightly goofy design. And it's weird how the back door is inset. Yes, but that whole surround is like rubber arrow. bumper. And it's arrow, too. Right. But it's also it allows them to back up to the loading door. Right. It's just, it's cleverly integrated. It just looks strange. Yeah. Because you're used to seeing a truck that has a bumper and the door goes all the way to the back. Yeah. But there's another, what is that, foot and a half, two feet? Something like that. Yeah. But whatever. So Nick will be proud of me. Yeah. I finally saw Maverick. Oh, yes. You did on the $2 Tuesday or whatever it was. It was $5. Your so bargain I found bag. out Tuesdays is five fifty. Yeah. If you sign up for their club, which is free, it's 5 bucks. Oh, did you sign up? Hell yeah, for 50 cents off. 50 cents off? That's the oldest thing I've ever said in my life. How? (laughs) All that work for 50 cents? Yeah, right. How many people were in the theater when you saw it? Oh, like, actually, so when I bought the tickets, because it's the uh, reservations. Yeah, you pick your seat. There were four people. All right. Including myself. And then you showed up. I showed up and there were probably a dozen. Oh, not bad. Considering the movie's been out for... There, well, seemingly forever there's a large group of geriatrics in front oh yes and i don't think they appreciated my laughing because there are some genuinely funny moments oh yeah. yeah but to your what you were talking about the helmet thing bugged the shit out of me yes the movie's set in california there are yeah. motorcycle helmet laws well, and I, yet- I pointed it out to somebody and they were like really that's where your disbelief gets or your yeah you suspend- i was like totally 100 yeah, all the I other ride. stuff yeah and well, so, yeah especially yeah, so it's like come on dude all right so grayson you saw Top Gun. What did you think? You saw Top Gun Maverick. Have you seen the first Top Gun? Yes, he's seen the first one. We've we've seen that a couple times. You made you made the comment that like the beginning of it is very much reminiscent of the original movie. Yeah. And I a hundred percent agree. What I thought was really clever was even the color palette yes. was the same. Yeah. Which that, is pretty rad. That actually. burnt orange yep. kind of It was way too short. Yeah. N- the that part, yeah. the intro, not the whole movie. All right, Grayson, give us your movie review. Is that a thumbs up, thumbs down? Mm. That's a middle finger. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you are You're full killing of life this today. You are killing this guest opportunity on did this you, show. Did you not have any caffeine today? No. Do you need a cup of coffee? He could probably use a cup of coffee. He's he's actually getting ready to go over to the neighbor's house. He's getting babysat. Ooh. Because uh, Jeanette and I uh, on. Well, more like child sat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On, on Thursday, we we, sal- we celebrated our... our 15th, celebrate? Celebrated, yeah, with salad. See? Uh, we celebrated our, our 15th wedding anniversary. 
And so because we had in and out at our wedding, um, no matter what day of the week our anniversary falls on, yep. we'll go get in and out and take our picture up front. So we've been doing that for 15 years That's now. As you should. And so when our when our anniversary falls midweek like it did, um, we wait till the weekend and do a fancier dinner. So tonight Which we makes are- makes sense. Yeah, we're yeah. doing a fancier dinner. Where are you going? Uh, no, no, not super fancy. We're going to Duke's. Jeanette just was in the mood for some Hawaiian mahi-mahi, Macnut ma- Mahi Mahi. That's in Huntington. Yeah, okay. So we're going to basically Huntington Beach Pier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and doing dinner there. But Grayson's going over to the neighbor's house. And so um, the neighbor has a, a little toddler. Uh, he's what, three now? Maybe Oof. three. And so he's into cars uh-huh. because he sees Grayson with his cars. Yeah. And so as a, uh, I think for his first birthday, we bought him the, uh, there's a, I can't remember what it's called. It's, it's basically a stroller, but it's shaped like a car. And it's oh a, yeah yeah yeah, and it's a McLaren. Oh cool! So we got that for for the for the kid, and he he's been loving it. And every time he comes over to the house, he makes a beeline to any car that he sees that's sitting out. Mm-hmm. And so we'll have like Hot Wheels sitting on the on the table or whatever, just for whatever reason. Are you gonna take him a Hot Wheel peace offering? Yes. So Grayson went to Target with Jeanette earlier today, and oh. they they bought a small um, Hot Wheels pop up set that looks like it's a, a burger fast food restaurant little play set thing. That's like modular and it opens up. So Grayson's going to be playing some Hot Wheels later today. So I don't know if he needs the coffee. I think he'll Maybe. be pumped up already. No? He's going to he's gonna fall asleep. I'll take some coffee. Have you ever had coffee? Yeah. Yeah, he's actually got much better taste for coffee than I do. Like, do you, how do you take it? You put stuff in it? Um. Yes. Well, like, do you put, put like cream creamer. and sugar? Yeah, yeah okay. Creamer, not just, not whipped cream. Black. Whipped yeah. cream. Whipped cream, yeah. I don't put whipped cream in my coffee. What do you put your whipped cream in? Tea. Okay. Wait, what? Like hot tea or cold tea? Hot. You like hot tea? Yeah. You like iced tea? Yeah. Mm, yeah. But you, put, but you put sugar in it? Or do you just drink it straight in up? my tea? Yeah. I don't put any sugar in my tea. No, what, what kind of hot tea do you like? English breakfast? No. Uh, there's like vanilla bean macaroon and there's like lemon glazed loaf. <laughs> we, that's yeah, why we, you don't put sugar in it because yeah. it's got it in it already it, well, it sounds fancy right <laughs> it does sound fancy this so, is my tea of choice yes yeah, tea java the, tea java it is the tea java original black tea so is it tea and coffee is no it? it's just tea then what's it's the java straight up part? iced tea is it plastic it's probably from glass? java's glass it's a glass bottle it's my 40 ounces of freedom Yum. actually it's 33.8 if you put it in a paper bag, nobody would know. Dude, I used to have a guy that worked for me that we had a BevMo next door. Yeah. And he would, every time he'd go over, he'd be like, hey, do you want a tea? But like, yep, please. And he would go and grab one and they put it in a brown bag. Oh, yeah. And he would wait until I was talking to a customer or something and he would go just and set it down in front of me. And every time <laughs> I'd have to explain, like, it's not a 40, it's and, tea. And then you pull it out of the bag and it is. And it looks like, well, no, that no, that'd be happened, funny yeah. if he got you a bottle of like Old English or something. But if you're not paying attention, it totally looks like a 40. Oh, yeah, because even the beverage color mm-hmm. kind of has that that same golden hue. Yeah, it was pretty funny. So I'd always be like, no, 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 no. Not beer at work. Beer later at work. <laughs> the race shop, we had a fridge that was full of beer. About 4.30, everybody would be walking around with a cup. Oh, nice. Cup. Yeah, it was great. And the, the the fridge just was labeled beer. So speaking of Nick, Nick, is, Nick has a 1990... 1990- a shitty attitude. No, oh. no. He's got a 91 NA Miata. Yeah, he does, and it's the, green. Yes, and it has a hard green. top. And he's been contemplating getting rid of it. He has because I think they're in the market for a Jeep or Sadly. something. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm open to possibly purchasing it. And Grayson has been trying to convince me to pull the trigger because he wants. Well, you can't you can't purchase it until Nick's ready to sell it. Well, that's true. Yeah. And he's contemplating it. Yeah, right. So it's it's up in the air, but at the same time, it's like. I kind of want it, but then do I really need it? And so it's it's this weird. Well, the question is, do you are you really just a renting it? Oh, for the you mean just buying it for a short right. like period it, of time? At some point, does he want it back? Oh, well, that's true. He might. Yeah. Once he regrets his his Jeep purchase, right? Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, Grayson keeps asking me when I'm going to buy it, and it's like ah, uh, like I'm I'm kind of split. Like it's like okay, well. Jeanette's always wanted a, a Porsche, so that's kind of like, okay, maybe a a used Boxster, we could do something like that, or a used Cayman. But then the Miata is way cheaper than yeah. the Porsche, so then it's like, okay, but then it's not, you know, so it's like, okay, we can do those things, but then... One you know, of them is definitely more affordable, and probably it will be for a little bit. 
Right. Cheaper running cost for sure. For sure. But then it's like you can always fix a Miata though. Like if you try to buy a new part for a Porsche, it's probably gonna cost like yeah, parts are expensive. Yeah, parts. yeah, and they're also the Caymans and the Boxers are a pain in the ass to work on them because of the engine location. Right. Yeah, so there are benefits to the uh, to the Miata, but then it's like, well, the garage is all nice and clean <laughs> because of the the remodel and everything. Do we want to take up a big chunk of space and having a car parked in there? But then Grayson wants the. But you could slide it over and figure out. Yeah, how but you he, can he's already got the other half of the garage taken over with his racing sim rig and his you know and the Xbox setup. So it's like, oh yeah. So then it's like, ah, oh, we could do that. And then Grayson really wants just to wrench on something. You know, that whole project, building, tweaking, playing with stuff. Sure. Yep. And it's like, okay, well, we could do that. But then it's like, you well. Just a little monkey. Well, that's or what a, I, a Grom, not a Grom, a Ruckus. Well, that's what I was thinking, like a, a motorbike or yeah. even like the, the Super 73s. I didn't realize that there's a whole aftermarket scene. I didn't know that. Yeah, there's, there's there's companies making like bolt-on accessories besides like the the fenders and handlebars and seats. Yeah, they're making different mods um, for those Super Seventy Threes. Kind of expensive. They kind of the are the bikes themselves. Yeah, and from what I can see online, the product quality is questionable. Like, um, I guess the design is pretty cool. Like everybody thinks that they're great looking. Yeah, they look bikes. cool. But my, I guess my brother-in-law has one. They're fun to ride. Yeah, yeah. But I guess I've, I've seen people complaining about like motor issues, battery issues, electronics, oh, controllers, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's whatever it is. I mean, it's all overseas product, so I don't know what the quality control is. I don't know. They're building a real motorcycle too. Yes, That's next coming yeah, out. Next. The C one R, I think they call it something like that. But I think I mean, if you're going to do something, I think you're better off getting something with an engine and learning. Learning that part of it a little bit. True, but as everything moves towards electrification, it's not like getting something electric would. No, it wouldn't be a bad thing. But yeah. I think there's something to. Do. <laughs> there you go. You're not gonna. I mean, other than doing oil changes, there's not a lot to do on that Miata. No, you're right. I mean, it's from, unless you buy an old beater. True. We but used I mean, to buy them for like twelve hundred bucks and flip them. Yeah. Now this day and age, that's that's a that's a. That's barely a, a body <laughs> yeah. know, for 200 yeah. bucks. No, we get like 1200 bucks and get, get one, literally just like pressure wash it, clean the interior, and flip them for like three or four. Yeah. Yeah. Those are fun. The good old days. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, the old days, I don't know if they were good. But yeah, that I think the Miata is a, it's cool. I hope Nick doesn't sell it. Only that, because that means they're going to get the wrong car. <laughs> right. Right. Like, yeah. There's not. I, I get that his wife likes the Jeep, but there's nothing good about those things. It's such a penalty box to drive. Yeah, you know. It's. I mean, I understand. Yes, they're capable off road, but the problem is, is like that's less than like ten percent of the use case. Unless it's like exclusively like an off road vehicle, right? And you tow it to your off road destination and then go off roading with it. Because I mean, I've gone off roading Jeeps and they're great off road, yeah. but I've also been on daily commutes in a Jeep and they were just horrendous. Uh-huh. So. It's, it's. I had a Wrangler for less than twenty four hours. Did you actually buy it? Uh, kind of, yeah, and then it got stolen out of my driveway. How'd that happen? I don't know. It's a fucking. It's a Jeep, dude. I'm sure they just got into it and asked it to start. <laughs> That's old. Kind of like the uh, the Hyundai Kias that are getting stolen these days with USB cords. Dude, how is it that the they didn't? I didn't think that any car had didn't. No, oh God, I didn't believe that any car lacked a transponder. Lacked a transponder these days. Yeah, that's like a two dollar part. So if you guys don't know, uh, there's been a rash of car thefts, like typically in the Midwest, like Milwaukee and Chicago and, and Pacific areas Northwest are, or something as well. As well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's these entry, I guess ba- uh, base model base, base model Kias and Hyundai's. Yeah where they don't have a transponder or a chip in the key. Yeah, there's nothing to tell the car that that key is the key. Right. And and to it, allow it to start. Cuz basically way back in the olden days, all that it took was the key having the right shape yeah. to fit in or the, the screwdriver. in the tumbler, right? Yeah. And you would t- twist and start the car. Right. Then because hot wiring became a thing, then the automakers added a second layer of protection, which is a... And we're tra- talking in like the 80s. Yeah, a transponder, which is basically just a, a small radio transmitter. And so the, the car had to see that specific frequency to say, okay, I will let the car start. And so in the 80s, they started doing this, and by the 90s, pretty much every car had it. Yeah. Um, and yet, for the entry spec Kias and Hyundais, it's, they did not. It's so weird to me, 30 and, years later. And because of TikTok, apparently... 
kids are now oh, their learning. History challenge. Yes. And, and, and doing instructional videos. You yank the plastic steering column cover off. You pull the ignition uh, cylinder straight out, which exposes this little plastic nubbin that you take the USB. I don't think we should be giving people instructions. It's audio. There's Is no it? picture. Yeah. Okay. And then you take the, the USB uh, connector. That, that As a disclaimer, we are not uh, saying you should do this. In fact, you shouldn't. No. Yeah. Don't do it. Okay, so you only USB buy treaty professionals only. Yeah, uh, and they're taking the, the USB A port that's on the end of like any USB to lightning cable or whatever, and shoving that into the naked key cylinder that's missing the actual the tumbler, and then twisting it and starting the car. So weird. And it's a huge epidemic where people are actually getting dropped by their insurance companies. Going, we're not going to cover you anymore because you have this car. So there is a, there's been a couple police departments that are offering to provide free anti-theft devices, which is the club. Yeah. Which is the club. And that's actually being provided by Hyundai Kia. They're, they're paying for these apparently from the article that I, okay. Read. And the other thing is that they are going to be offering an anti-theft device at an undisclosed price coming up in the next month or two. Like an, uh, uh, I like guess a an alarm, band-aid or something? Like some type of alarm or something? Yeah, some type of band-aid, but you're going to have to pay for it. There's no point in even stealing those kind of cars. They're not even good quality. Not I, don't think, I don't think they're cars. stealing them for the quality. It's just a free transportation. Yeah. And, and a lot of this is just bored kids with something to do, and it's just kind of malicious entertainment. It's well, shitheads. Yes. Yeah. But most of the time, if you steal a Kia or Hyundai, it's going to be like on a quarter gas left and... Break down on the highway. Man, that is a sweeping generalization of their uh, demographics. Yeah. And a negative I, outlook. And I don't know how he formed that opinion. Is this is this something you learned playing Forza? No. no. <laughs> how, how did you come to, to put together this, this theory? Is this based on your own personal interaction with Hyundai, Kia, and base yeah, trim you level? You talk to a lot of trim, base trim owners? Yeah. But if you, I mean, like just driving on a highway, you see a lot of like Hyundais, Kias, um, you just see a bunch of like. Do you think Hyundai Kia owners are worse than Nissan Altima owners? <laughs> I would say the Hyundai, or no, I, w- I would say the Altima owner is worse. Because they actually don't care about their car. They probably paid five hundred dollars for it, and they don't mind crashing Oof. into a wall. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, he's not entirely wrong, but it is a broad generalization. <laughs> it is. We're getting into some murky territory. Here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a. Uh, I don't know. But hey, Hyundai Kia, if you want to sponsor the young grownups, we'll take your money. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they do not after that. Yeah. It. It is. It's funny. I mean, it's. Oh, uh, first gen Priuses are the apparently having their catalytic converter stolen at a higher rate than anything else right now. Is it because there's just more? I think there's a lot of them, and they're super easy to get to. Apparently, I'm. Dude, so, I go out to my truck every time I go out to it. I'm like, this is the day. It's just going to be loud as shit, and it never is. There was a, I guess, an organized crime ring that was broken up in the Pacific Northwest. I want to say like in the Portland area, and it was like three dudes and the one dude was a ringleader and they found like property and storage units with something like 3000 catalytic converters. Saw that. And it was a huge, like organized crime ring. But what's weird about it is, okay, you have that many, they're in storage. Where are you dumping them? Like, how are you selling them? Well, I guess they were being sold to Texas, like across state lines. And yeah, it was like somebody in Texas was like, whatever, a truckload just showed up and I don't care. I guess. Weird. Yeah. This has got to be the plot, I think, for Fast and Furious 12. Instead of like VCRs in the big ring. They're stealing catalytic converters. <laughs> yeah. They're, you know bu- they're busting an organized cat ring. Dude, if you watch Fast the original Fast and the Furious and you pop, like, kind of stop the screen and look at what they're stealing. Oh, yeah. It's embarrassing. The vintage electronics. Yeah. The, the, the VCRs. Yeah. It is embarrassing. Not even DVD nah. players, I think. Nope. It was VCRs. And it was old CRT TVs. Oh, yeah. Like little tiny ones. Uh-huh. Like what, 24 inch or something like that? 27 inch, something, something like that. Like yeah. that. Yeah. It's pretty funny. It's funny when you think about that was the pinnacle of audio visual technology at the time. Oh, my parents thought they were dope because we had the 32 inch CRT TV. That was, that was big. That was back in the day. That was yeah. big. And we had, it was a Toshiba. Ooh. And I remember we got it at Circuit City. I remember that. And it just be, I remember going into Circuit City and it just being so dark inside. 
Like yeah, they, they had, like, were dark neon lighting, like accents on mm-hmm. the wall and stuff. But it's just that whole eighties electronic store vibe. I man, I kind of weirdly miss Circuit City. Yeah, it's a thing. I mean, we went to we had to go to Best Buy about a week. You know, what three weeks ago now? Grayson's uh, Chromebook crapped out. Like we bought him a Chromebook. I thought those book. couldn't break because there's nothing to them. Well, the hardware physically, it was it was the hinge, the laptop oh. hinge. And so when the pandemic first started, the, the school said, hey, you can sign out a Chromebook. And we're like, ah, it's kind of a pain in the ass. We'll just get Grace in his own yeah. Chromebook. That way, the school, if they have limited resources, they you don't have to it. worry about it. Right. Sure. And if, there's got to be other kids that need it more than he does. So, so we bought him a, a really nice Lenovo uh, Flex 5 Chromebook or whatever. It was like the top pick. It was like 300 bucks. Yeah. Reasonable. And he used it every day for two years. And literally on the exact two-year ownership anniversary, the right hinge starts to fail. Uh-huh. And it's splitting the, the plastic, the cosmetic plastic, on the uh, display lid. I'm like, shit. So I look it up. And sure enough, it's a, it's a known flaw with a hinge. Oh, cool. On those, well, I don't know if that's cool. It wasn't cool, but right. on those Lenovo laptops. And that same physical laptop is either available as a chromebook or as a windows laptop and it's the same issue on both of them oh got it's it, okay. different operating system basically. Yeah, 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 yeah but um so it was a known issue and there's no real fix for it so we went out and just bought him a new chromebook um and so we went into the best buy mm-hmm. and it was a weird experience going into best buy this day and age and it, it had been a while but i think the last time i was in there was when we bought the tv for the garage which was at this point, almost 18 months ago, maybe two years ago. I went into one within the last, probably within the last month, and there were no associates to help. And there were there were like four or five people that just kept walking by. And finally, I was like, excuse me. Like, because yeah. I, what I wanted was, had you know those stupid, it's on the, the rod. Yeah, and it's but got it has the lock. The, the lock on the end of it. Yeah. And I was like, uh, hello, can somebody help me? The guy's like, oh, somebody will be with you in a little bit. I'm like, you are literally doing nothing. Yeah, it was it was weird going in there because we were outnumbered by employees. Oh, see, I had the opposite. But at the same time, the employees weren't approaching or doing anything. They were just kind of all congregating in the back, just that kind of staying away. Happened. Yeah, it's weird. And then the Best Buy seems to have sold their soul to like every of their brands. So all these store within a store concepts. Oh yeah. So like, like in the back the corner, Apple one the Verizon. This, yeah. And then, yeah. then there's a Samsung corner, right. and then there's this and that. And so we were over. Towards the Samsung section, but there was this little like peninsula of Chromebooks, uh-huh. and so that seemingly was like no man's land between the Panasonic or the Samsung section and then like the laptop section. So finally, somebody approached us after we'd been there for like fifteen minutes, like That's looking so at him. annoying. And then he rung us up, and luckily he didn't try to pitch us on the extended warranty or any of that other bullshit. He just, yeah, just tendered the idea. sale, and it was you fine. Found a micro center. They didn't carry the laptop or the, the Chromebook we wanted. Micro Center is a special kind of weird. Micro Center is a special kind of weird because of the customers. Even, well, they're kind of like a weird in between fries. Well, it used to be RIP fries. fries. Yeah. And <laughs> they're like a weird fries Best Buy combo. It's, a, it's an overly techy, like I can build my PC crowd. But they also have a bunch of crap. Yes. That like fries would have had. They also have a little bit of like stuff, normal, like normal stuff like Best Buy has. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of consumer-grade stuff, but it's a lot of, like, resistors and, like, build your own. That's what I mean. Like, it's that weird mix. Yeah. there's. I didn't know this, but I was in Detroit, and we drove by a micro center. Didn't know that they were all over the place. Oh, yeah, what'd you end up doing in Detroit? What was your team-building activity? Uh, we just had a dinner, had some meetings, and so I flew out. I left my house at 3 a.m. On Tuesday morning? On Tuesday morning. And came home Wednesday I night? I came home. Went, I was home by 10 o'clock. Wow. Wednesday night. Where was the dinner at? Anywhere good? I went to Corktown uh, to All this right. Italian place, which was cool. Okay. For those of you that don't know, Corktown is like kind of the where the train station is like one of the more revitalized areas of downtown Detroit. Um, if you're into Ken Block, it's where he did one of his slidey slide videos in front of the train station. Yes. That train station is being converted into Ford's uh, technology center. Yes. And it's then right down the better. street is an awesome Slows barbecue. Yeah. So we were going to go to Slows. Slows is great. And one of the guys calls us and says, hey, bad news. Slows is closed. Because it was a Monday night? or t- Oh, no. No, it was Tuesday. Tuesday. They were open the day before, which was Labor Day. Yeah. They had a sign on the door that said closed for repairs. No explanation. Oh, then there's uh, Matt's bar across the street. Yeah. So which is also pretty good. Yeah, we didn't go there. We went to the little Italian joint that's right down the street from Slows. Okay. It's right by the 
the burger bar. I can't yeah, remember yeah, what it's yeah. called. Yeah, the green building. Yeah. But it's not the green building. Anyways, what was weird, so we're eating dinner, and we're all having a conversation. Everything was cool. and That is weird. <laughs> no, that's not the weird part. <laughs> One, the guy sitting next to me goes, is that what I think it is? And I stopped and listened, and it's a ver- it was a version of... Oh man, I'll think of it later. Anyway, so was it a oh, song? Oh, it was, it was a ver- yeah. It was the the song playing was a version of "Dream a Little Dream." Oh, weird. Even weirder. We were eating an Italian restaurant. They were playing the French version, <laughs> and it got weirder because it wasn't. We started listening, and everything they were playing was in French. Oh, weird. So it was really bizarre, but the food was good. Did somebody not understand the difference between French and Italian, and they just picked some weird Maybe. Spotify playlist? Maybe. It was pretty funny, though. It, and, you know, I mean, it turns out, like, it was far to go for, I think I did the math. It was, like, 26 hours or something in Detroit. All right. So you spent more than a day there. Yeah. <laughs> there, there <laughs> and only because I had to wait for a plane. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I liked I like downtown Detroit. I yeah. know a lot of people think it's. No, I, I enjoy shittle, it. But like, I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy going to the baseball games yeah. downtown. And I've actually out. never been to a game. I So funny enough, I looked to see if there was a game. Yeah. Guess where Detroit was? L.A.? Yeah. No, they were in Anaheim. Anaheim, yeah. Yeah, they're playing the Angels. So yeah, the we, Los we Angeles just, yeah, Angels. Yeah, yeah, we just swapped places. But nice. you know what? I haven't been there. I hadn't been to Detroit in probably 10 years. Yeah, it's been... If not, well, maybe not quite that long, but, but close. I think it's been probably four years since, since I was last there. Like, the pandemic, it really put a pause on all that. Because I, I used to go out there all the time for yeah, work. Sure. Because there's all sorts of, like, automotive conferences and stuff to go check out or, or the auto show or whatever. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's been a while. So I, I actually kind of look forward to getting back out there, mainly for the slows, but also just to kind of see stuff. Because, like, I love going, when I have free time, going to the, the Henry Ford Museum. I've never been. That's an amazing yeah. museum. Like, Most I need to get times, Grayson over there. That would be cool. Most of the times I've been to Detroit, it's been for work. So I've been like, I haven't really had any downtime. Yeah. Um, there's only been a couple times I've got to explore. But mostly, I mean, yeah, most of the time I just have not really had a chance to explore. And we weren't actually in Detroit. We were in... The Burbs? Yeah, I, I'll tell you. I'll eventually remember. We are in Dearborn. <laughs> we were close. I mean, not super far, but, you know, yeah. different part of the city. Far I, enough that it wasn't convenient. One thing that I do love about, and I, I hate to say this because it just sounds kind of fucked up, but I really love abandoned buildings. Oh, yeah. There's, there's plenty, plenty of them. plenty of them in Detroit. And I, it's sad. Yes. But at the same time, it's so rad to look at. Like, I could wander around Detroit and just taking photos yeah. for days. I love that. Yeah, there's some cool stuff out there. Yeah, for sure. Grayson is now excited that we are in pumpkin spice season because it's means halloween is right around the corner and grayson has already started researching his ideal halloween costume it's gonna be a pickle <laughs> are you gonna be a pickle for halloween grayson no what are you thinking about being for halloween um i found this costume on amazon it's um the air dancers that you find out like um you know the oh, inflatable yeah, yeah, guys yeah, with yeah, the wavy yeah. hands i've seen those One they those, make like, them as a dealerships costume like, yeah and it's inflated yeah it's, there's it's um, a battery powered fan in there there's a really funny video of a little kid in one of those costumes that stands in front no. of one of the real things and they're like dancing together and it's hilarious right. and they're like 40 bucks on yeah. amazon and it's from the actual manufacturer that makes the real auto dealership size yeah that's funny so that's kind of cool that the, the company that makes the real huge ones that you see kind of clowns on themselves a little bit and makes a costume yeah, version of it. That's cool. So right now that is the the front runner for Grayson's Halloween costume. I have an inflatable T-Rex. Yeah. Yeah. I know you had it. I didn't know yeah. you kept it. Oh, I still have it. Where I, do you store it? It's shoved in the closet somewhere, <laughs> I guess. But it was, uh, I got it just because I thought it would be funny and my nieces and nephews thought yeah. it was hilarious. And, that was good enough. Funny. and it was cheap. Yeah, yeah, it was like twenty five bucks. Oh, it's cheap. Yeah, 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 this, yeah. I thought this at thirty nine bucks. Was, I think it was, was I bought it on affordable. sale. Uh-huh. It was one of those things where it was like a, I randomly saw it on sale and was like, for twenty five bucks. Yeah, it's it's yeah. kind of hard to say no. But the weird thing is, is, I think Halloween this year is on a Monday night. Yes. Yeah. So that's like ah. Uh, yeah, I don't normally get dressed up. I mean, I haven't. I I would, but I don't. I haven't dressed up in years. I'm much more apt to dress up if it's like a Friday Saturday sure. night kind of thing. I thought about being Moses. Because? Because I've got a beard, beard, long hair. All right. I guess I could be Jesus. Yeah. There you go. But Moses would be kind of funny. <laughs> make a really weird list of Ten Commandments. Make some tablets. There you go. I could be the dude. Oh, Lebowski. Yeah. yeah I did have a white Russian the other day. You're practically there. They're delicious. All you need is the uh, the cardigan. Yeah. And they make the... Like the you can buy it, that yeah. Kind, yeah. yeah. The, the the reproduction version of, of his sweater from the movie. 
Yeah, but uh, the inflatable guy is a pretty good pick. Yeah, so that was kind of random. Cause but are you going to do, I guess then, do you do Trick or Treat on Monday or do you do stuff on Sunday? I don't know. I think Trick or Treating would just be on Monday. I guess. But yeah, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. Well, you don't Trick or Treat on the day before Halloween. Oh, but if it's a s- weekend, well, yeah, I guess not. You could do like a neighborhood party. And yeah, I, sure. I'm sure the neighborhood will do something probably yeah. on the weekend. Um, we Our neighborhood does a chili cook-off. Yeah, and yeah, so you've mentioned that. yeah, Jeanette's the the reigning neighborhood chili cook off champion. So she's going to be defending her title this year. It does it have beans in it. Yeah, it's not chili and meat and a bunch of meat and it's good. Yeah, the 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 beans are in there because she does it as like a, a I think she did like a Mexican chili, so it had like the that type of flavor yeah, palette sure. to it. My sister makes a really good white chili. What? What's it's the got white chicken in it? Oh, chicken. Okay. Honestly, I don't know. It's no like the chili itself is light white. colored. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's really good. I have no idea how they make it. Never asked. I just eat it. It's just milk and bleach. It's just yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's really good for you. Um. Yeah. I. You know, dairy, man. Dairy is a. It's a weird thing. Like I love. <laughs> well, like I love cheese and stuff. That's quite the segue. Like, oh, well, dairy. Well, no, I was thinking about then. I was going back to the White Russians and like they're cream. Okay. Yeah. And they're not. They are delicious to drink. Uh huh. But man, do they, they wreck you? I'm not lactose intolerant, but they didn't sit well. Oh really? Yeah, it was like I was. I had a little bit of a like a stomach pain a little bit. Oh, afterwards. interesting. But I mean, I would drink another one. Don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just don't keep Kahlua or vodka or cream in my house. We have. I think we keep Kahlua in the house. We definitely keep a lot of Malibu because Jeanette makes the, the rum cakes with that. Mm. Um, and we end up getting gifted bottles of Malibu from people that know that Jeanette makes the rum makes cakes. Makes the cakes, sure. So I think it's their way of paying it forward towards... Rum cakes are good. ...the eventual rum cake. Yeah, those are good. I uh, As long as we're on the topic of drinks, so this long drink thing I've seen on the internet. What? Oh, yeah, you it's took like a picture a, a of it. Finnish drink. It's a brand. Yeah, it's a brand, long drink. It's literally called long drink. It's yeah. some Finnish thing, apparently. Um, from Finland, not finish it as, as you're done. Yeah. Yeah. But I had like all these people are posting about it. It's all over the place. I have never seen it in a store until, in all, until yesterday. Where'd you see it? Uh, Albertsons at 17th and Tustin, which by the way, Albertsons get your shit together. Cause your meat is way overpriced. I, oh yeah. Dude, their chicken was so expensive, but I was, that's where I happened to be. And I needed to get stuff to make dinner. So you bought overpriced chicken. Dude, I didn't want to make another stop. All right. You know what I mean? Like you're just there. Yeah. So whatever. Um, so anyway, so th- I saw it there, and you, it comes. It's twelve ounce can comes in a, a pack. I literally didn't really kind of know what it was. I thought it was a seltzer. Yeah. Did you buy the a single or you bought the no? Pack? It's a, a six pack. Okay. And so I bought them, brought them home, and I didn't until last night after they'd been in the fridge and were cold. Yeah. I didn't even read the label. So I look at the label, and it's a gin drink, okay. like gin and grapefruit, sparkling drink. Interesting. You like Fresca? Yeah. It's Fresca with gin. Oh. And honestly, way too drinkable. They're five and a half percent alcohol, which isn't terrible, but they are, it's like drinking a delicious, refreshing fresca. So do you and you don't really, back? unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you don't really think about, like, it doesn't taste the, like you're drinking a bunch of booze. You don't get part, wasted. The hard part for me would be if it tastes like fresca, I would be tempted to pour it over ice. So I did. I took them, I poured them over ice in a, like a, you know, one of my yeah. plastic cups and delicious yeah. interesting absolutely perfect did you put a little umbrella in there to complete no, the look i didn't but i mean it it it's really good and apparently they have different flavors and I'll they have, have to like look for it. I, I, zero I'll, sugar i had never seen it i'll try one so what was weird about it was i was like where are all these people getting this stuff like does it really exist clearly at albertson's it does and then i saw somebody made uh long drink slushies which actually could be pretty good maybe you know i did see somebody do that yeah, uh, you know who it was? Ken Block. It was Mr. That's, Block. That's where I saw it. Interesting. But after I after I saw that, I saw it a bunch of other places and a bunch of other people talking about it, and I was like, "Is this some hipster thing? Like maybe it's a Midwest thing? Because it's actually a American product, which makes it even more confusing." So then, there's no Finns involved. It says product of Amer- of the U.S. Right, but what's the Finn influence? Is maybe it it's their it's, recipe or their yeah. Maybe they it's some drink that the Finnish drink, but they brought it over here and make it here or something. But anyway, how, how much is a six pack? I didn't look because I just had a bunch of stuff in my cart. Okay, um, but it was interestingly I'll have to look out for it. It was refreshing. It was pretty good. Yeah, it, it was never really on my radar other than like a, cu- a couple of social media posts. But I yeah. never thought, oh, I want to try that. I was just like, 
right. When I, I like, well, I used to really like gin and tonics. Okay. And then I kind of burned out on it. And and some gin is way too juniper And so that's kind of a turn off. Like it's, it's good, but you over like overly herbal stuff is kind of meh. All right. Um, but this was just refreshing. A, a little <laughs> bit of a tang and like, yeah. yeah. And it was a thing like I was doing stuff around the house, making dinner, hanging out. And, and before you know it, you've had a couple of them. You heard your, I think Grayson hurt his wrist sitting there. Yeah. You okay? Got a, you a chair survive? injury? I pulled my wrist or something and it pulled a... Oh, oh man. You got to be careful for that. You got to stretch to really do a podcast properly. Yeah, right. Wham. You got to get prepped. Yeah. So, Hollywood sucks. Let's... And that they're running out of ideas. So, did you hear the never, the never Ending Story is one of the best movies of all time? Right. They are currently in a... Basically a war over the rights to... The never ending story. There's two or three different companies bidding on the rights. Who's selling them? Whoever owns them. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know exactly. But they are bidding in order to either A, remake the movie, or B, turn it into a series. Well, if it turns into a series, it would have to be a never ending series. Perpetual, sure. Yes. But can you just leave shit alone? Willow TV series just came out. Well, what do you find more annoying? A reboot where they take the same concept and just start all over from the beginning or the... Like a continuation? Or the continuation or a prequel. Like, I mean, those are like the three kind of most commonly... it It seems like the tendency is to relaunch all of this stuff rather than you know yeah. remake the only thing i will say about the willow show or the willow series which i probably will never watch because i'm not huge into fantasy is that at least it is not a remake of willow it's a new adventure or a different adventure but it crazy enough has willow in it oh like it's the same actor he's still alive oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's the same guy playing the same character but it's not it's not like they went back and redid Willows. They're just following on another adventure, which is, I guess, fine. I but guess. it just it's it's jumping off from a familiar character to start something off new. But yeah, it seems like it's they're taking all the stuff that they know, you know, 35, 40, 45, that range that they know there's nostalgia. There's a for guaranteed that. audience. And yeah, they're just, and they're just rebuilding it. But the movie just start I, over or start your own thing. The movie I am really excited to see. When it hits uh, Roku later, mm-hmm. I think next month mm-hmm. is weird. Um, what do you mean? It's the Weird Al. Oh, mocked. I thought it was out already. No, so it, it got introduced at the Toronto International Film Festival like last weekend, yeah. and um, just so rave a, reviews and stuff. And it's it's a, a mock biopic. Yes, right. It takes that that whole biopic kind of cliche. Is it biopic or biopic? I don't know. It's a biopic. It's a no, I don't know. I'm Biography. Asking, like, yeah. You can say it however you want. I'm just asking. Yeah. And uh, I don't know the answer. I just <laughs> but, uh, but the idea. So the answer is yes. Yes. Yeah. So it takes it and it kind of spoofs it and twists it. So, I mean, it, it it's Weird Al in, in his best because he does the same thing with his music as he's doing with this movie. And everything I've read about it, like the, the Rolling Stone articles, the New York Times reviews, all these things make it seem like it's really <laughs> worth checking out. Cause that's, it, that's what I've heard as well. It starts off sort of normal and it just starts getting more and more twisted as right. it goes on. And so I can't wait to see that movie. Like that is something I'm actually looking forward to seeing as soon as it's available. All the press pics of him and Daniel Radcliffe are pretty funny. They're rad. And what's weird about it though, is like, it's hilarious when you think about it. So Daniel Radcliffe is playing weird Al and he's a good foot and a half shorter. Oh yeah. It's not even, yeah, no, it's like not even remotely close. It's funny, but um, so UHF, remember that movie? That movie was awesome. We had a huge, great conversation about UHF actually while it's in Detroit. It's that movie is amazing. Um, but again, there's an under under uh, what do you call that appreciated. appreciated movie? I don't think a lot of people have seen it. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're, not you're as many right. people as you think. No, you, you're probably right. Yeah, it's it's definitely a niche audience. I remember renting it. Yeah, I we owned it. Oh, and yeah? I, I practically wore that tape out. Yeah, I might actually. That might be one of the few VHS movies I kept. Oh wow! Like it is. It was one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, I, I just I can't wait to see it. Weird, the Al Yankovic story. <laughs> it's gonna be. It should be pretty funny. So it's, but it's on the Roku thing, and which you yeah. told me is an app. Yes. Okay. So, so you, I've got to get a new app. Yes. I tried to watch something on the Peacock the other day. Okay. Nothing that you want to watch is free on Peacock. Like everything is pay. 
Oh yeah, and I'm yeah, not going to yeah. sign up for. Yeah, I agree for that trash. Yeah, so Friday, November fourth, on the Roku channel, you'll be able to watch Weird. Yeah, the for Al some Yankovic reason, story. I thought it was out already. Maybe it's just because I've seen so much stuff about it recently. Because it's it's been entered into these film festivals, oh, okay. and so that's where it's getting all the press coverage and all that stuff. Because it's, I guess, you can buy tickets to see it in certain spots. Like you can see it in the theater. In the theater. Oh, that'd be cool. But I don't know if it's nation. I don't think it's nationwide release. But yeah, it's it's. They made the theatrical release. And I wonder if they did it just for awards contention. That would make sense. On, on, no, no, she's November. What are we in, September? September 3rd. We're in September, yeah. September 3rd was National Movie Day. And it was $3. Yeah, 3 bucks. But I looked, and there was not a movie you'd want to see for $3. But apparently everything, like even like. uh, Well, right, but they, they were showing, a lot of the theaters, most of what they were showing was old movies. Oh, like vintage movies? Yeah, so they pulled a bunch of stuff to replace it with that for the day. And then by the time I found a theater that was showing something, like, say, Maverick, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, You could pick and sit in the front row if you want with a bunch of other DGENs. And yeah. I was not... It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth your $3? No. Which is... It's fine. And that was, again, Labor Day weekend, too, though, which is why... Partly why it was so packed. Oh, darn. I did watch an interesting show on HBO. Yes. It was apparently one of the last productions to finish before the pandemic. Okay. Or filmed like barely into the pandemic. So there's some weird like overlap there. It's Rosario Dawson and it's a show called DMZ. Wow. Yeah, it's Demilitarized Zone. It's a show that takes place. It's kind of like a dystopian future type show where there's now the country has gone through a civil war and there's two halves of the country. That sounds familiar. And Long Island (laughs) is a demilitarized zone and she has to go into it to try to like find her son it's based on a comic book oh. or a graphic novel or something it was if you've got a you know the stamina for four episodes because that's all it is and it's never going to be made they're not going to make any more of them it's like four, to, four or five episodes something like that who it's signs weird. a deal for a four season or four episode season that's a weird it's super weird but how long are the episodes hour and ten ish so five hours. It's, yeah, roughly. honestly, was pretty entertaining for what it was. Yeah. Be- and because by the time you're sick of it, it's, it's over. Did you watch them all straight through? Yeah. Oh. And I, yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say go run right out and see it, but <laughs> if you if you got the time, I, I don't. Yeah, well, I or mean, for those patients, of people or, no. over there no. that on the internet or the internet people that hear this, yes, it's not the worst thing you could do with your eyeballs. Hey, Grace, and I had it on while I was working. So, are you gonna watch DMZ? Are you gonna watch it, Grayson? No. All yeah. right, there he goes. Anyways, I had it on while I was working. The so youth of America has spoken. Well, a youth <laughs> in America. Yeah. Dude, there's um, there's an, uh, I don't know. Yeah. There, there's just there's so much junk on TV. It's impressive. I know. I know. Grayson's still after me to finish watching uh, Cobra Kai. Oh, you haven't finished? That's no, good. because we we've watched the first two seasons and yeah. we just never started the third season i thought i think they're doing another one i thought they were supposed to be done but yeah apparently there is a yeah, fourth season there's a fourth season coming there was something else too that i heard about recently that i one of those same things where you're like huh i didn't realize that was coming back lego masters comes back later this year Ooh. or this month i mean that was a it's entertaining it is i lost I, interest halfway through the first season through the first one yeah i would rather that they focused more on the build, like, the Legos. Oh, well, okay, that too. But like, even the, just how they're building stuff. But hey, you know, yeah, is what it is. Legos, you know, getting expensive. Yes. Er, well, they did have a big price hike recently. Yeah, like the DeLorean. Yeah, like that was a a one sixty nine set. I think Something it was, like that, and yeah. it went up to like one ninety nine. Yep. Well, and they just announced this giant, that giant Black Panther bus that's three hundred and fifty dollars. Which I don't understand. Like, I don't get it. So it's expensive. Either. I mean, it's it's 18 inches tall. Okay, but still. And ugly. Yeah, and black. And, and the problem with it's I just think, It's all black. And that's the thing. It, the challenge is, it's, it's, from a distance, it's hard to see any detail because it's all monochromatic. I, I couldn't even tell in the pictures. I guess now I, I it's realize. It's got the Wakanda the, arms well, crossed. Yeah, thing. but it looks just like a mess. Yes. Like, you can't tell really what it is. But $350, 2,900 pieces, 350 bucks. Grayson's now browsing the uh, the Lego site. Oh, there you go. And so here's the 
There's a... The Black Panther set. I don't know if I told you about this, but I somehow stumbled on this Lego investor group on Facebook. Did I tell you about this? Yeah. You, so, I think you sent me a link to join. I was like, no. You don't need to. What? Oh, so here's why, though. What is funny about it. Every single post, somebody posts up, they're like, is this set good to invest in? And then immediately somebody responds like, use the search bar and do your own research. <laughs> it's like, okay, then why does this page exist? Yeah. Right? It's pretty funny. But... If you're looking into Lego as a some type of investment and you're you just know, invest in and fun. flipping it, don't be a dick. Yeah. What's surprising is that I still have a Lego set that has bigger dimensions than that. Um, Which one? The F1 car. It's like 22.5 inches long. It's pretty long. How, when it's yeah. probably it's less expensive. Oh, yeah. It was like 160. I don't understand why that's 350. It must be solid brick inside. And, it but, takes what up is my tw- whole, like... Uh, display like it takes out. Oh, your McLaren does. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is. I mean, it's twenty nine hundred pieces. Maybe you can wear it. That would be interesting. A buildable helmet that you could wear. <laughs> I mean, I know p- people have done it. Oh yeah, but not like from Lego. Right. Lego is definitely capitalizing on the uh, adult market lately. Oh, for sure. It would be interesting. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You're not too much longer. There's probably going to walk into a Lego store and there'll be like the bead curtain that says, you know, eighteen and over. <laughs> <laughs> like they're getting to that point where they've got that many 18 and over sets. You can go to the Lego lounge. I'm building those 18 and over sets. Well, sir, you be, be careful because the Lego police will come after you. You're not old enough. Yeah. You need some inappropriate brick building. Oh, no. Are you still playing Horizon? Yeah. Like a lot? Um, I've played in like uh, a week. No, I, he, he's he's gotten back into Rocket League because there was a oh, I've never played Rocket League. Honda Civic. Is that I don't even is it a racing game? No, it's a soccer game with cars. Oh, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, but I've never played it. Yeah, it's it's in it. I played it a handful of times with Grayson. I'm not that yeah. great at it, but what was so special about it, getting the Honda Civic for the game? I don't understand that. Can you explain? It's just a cool car, and then. But what kind of Honda Civic is it? Old. Is it a hatchback? Is it a sedan? It's, it's the old hatchback. Okay. It, and I got it because it wasn't just a bundle that just came with the car and like a couple items. It was something that you could unlock with along of a, um, along with a bunch of other things. So it was a greater value yeah. than just a, a car. Like, did you have to do something to get it, or you just you paid just for had it? To. He paid for it. Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> he he bought a he got a he had enough cash so he went and got an Xbox fifteen dollar like gift, gift card, card. Yeah. And they redeemed it for. So this is how the whole mon- money laundering thing goes. He takes cash and exchanges it for an Xbox gift card, redeems the Xbox gift card within the Microsoft Xbox portal store. Sure. Store. Then he buys Rocket League credits, and then with the Rocket League credits, he bought. The Honda Civic. It's like this whole chain. Weird. Yes. You can't just buy the thing with the money you have on. You have to buy the credits to buy yeah. it. Which is silly. Yeah. It's like an extra step that you don't need. It's like getting a receipt with a donut. And it's not that Epic Games, the owner of Fortnite, owns Rocket League. Uh-huh. They have a bunch of settings that you can't do without like entering all your like address, like Weird. all your addresses on. So like I can't trade with other people because. You need to go to this website, enter your IP address, your what? phone number, your email. Yeah, that's bizarre. Yeah. Yay, epic. Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, so in Forza, I'm at the point where I think the next race, I'm, so I'm trying to do all of the street races, and I've got one left, and it's like the Colossus or something. Okay. Uh, wait, so th- Forza Horizon 5 or 4? 5. It's like a 35-mile race. Oh, you mean the uh, Goliath? Yeah, the Goliath. I don't have that kind of time. I think I've already done it. I did one that would took it was a literally like a half an hour long. And this one is gonna be about the same. Yeah. When I had Forza Horizon three, there was this one race I always did that would take me like two laps each lap. Um two minutes each lap. Uh uh-huh. and I decided to make it so the settings I did fifty laps. So after a couple of while, like an hour and so of racing, I finished and I'm like I'm not playing anymore. Yeah, it's a lot I mean you have to sit there the whole time and it's a lot to do. The um when uh, Gran Turismo first came out, was it Gran Turismo 1 or 2, where they introduced races that were, well, they were like, so if you entered, like, the 24 hours of Nürburgring, in the game, it was a 24-hour race. In real life? In real life. So 24 hours? Yeah. So you would have to race. I mean, you could pause it, but still, the races were that long. So you could pause and switch with a buddy or pit stop and switch with a buddy. 
but 24 hours a six hour race was six hours oh geez yeah they had all this they had a whole endurance series i think they still do i mean i'm sure they do yeah i'm sure but in grand Turismo. but could you imagine that's no, just thank you so i know <laughs> i know friends that are still trying to get their hands on playstation 5 so if you see one from what i heard they're actually starting to become more and more available oh really i've, I've not seen one at all the switch is easy enough to get now yeah but i've seen i see those at target all the time but yeah. uh no xbox is still well, we got and i haven't seen so. a ps5 and you've got an xbox right yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just think it's interesting that it's still how long since they released it? Two years ago? That's what's kind of nutty. Is some of these things have just been hard to come by, but right. still to this day, and People you would are think they're selling it still. Right. Mm-hmm. You would think that at some point the the demand would have petered off because those that really wanted it got it, and then, but still, yeah, apparently not. I wonder how many. I wonder where, like what their sales numbers are like. Yeah, Microsoft doesn't disclose them, but I mean, I guess xbox or playstation like playstation yeah yeah it does quite well yeah i mean that's pretty impressive that they're still that backlogged i yep. mean impressive not really but you know what i mean yes disappointing let's use that it's yeah impressive. i signed <laughs> up i did sign up for amazon they'll email you when they're like they you get an invitation yeah right? sony i think the same thing you can email yeah uh, so I, and sign up for an email notification. i just you know what i said let's see what happens if i get one maybe i'll flip it but no nothing. flipping nothing haven't heard anything I don't really need a PlayStation. No. There's nothing on it that is exclusive. That Final Fantasy. Grand Turismo. There, yeah. There's um, Car X Drifting only on PlayStation. So yeah, but that's not a major title that most people know of. No, and I don't like drifting games. You don't? No. I don't Why not? Really, I don't really care for drifting. Oh. Like, I get it. It's cool, I guess. He's a liar. <laughs> no, I'm definitely not. I would much rather watch uh, ice skating. Oh, dude! Actually, ice skating can be interesting. So is drifting. It's kind of the same thing. It's just the judged. I just scoring I criteria. It doesn't do it for me. I did watch. Did you watch the new episode of uh, Runs Good? Yeah, uh, they did Skyline. No, I haven't seen that one. Oh, uh, it's we'll pretty to, good. We'll have to watch that one. Yeah, they do. They try to drift it. We watched the uh, Fast with Finnegan. They they took a Pinto wagon and they put a big blower on it and stuff. And then they raced it against this, um, what was Frederico. the guy's? Oh yeah. The, Frederico. Yeah. The, yeah. The Italian drifter that has a Ferrari. The Ferrari. Yeah. And so this time they worked on the suspension a on a go-kart yep. track and then, uh, raced Frederico around it. And that one was actually pretty fun. The new faster with Finnegan is, uh, <laughs> lawnmower racing that one was pretty rad it's hilarious. It was pretty funny yeah but just how temperamental those lawnmowers were every single one of them like basically blew up yeah why it's so ridiculous anyways like lawnmower racing is hilarious but the dude set a bonneville record of 197 miles per hour it wasn't that fast yes no yes i thought he said it was like 97 Oh, maybe, but still. Either you, way, that's it, on a, a lawnmower. Yeah, I've taken a bar stool down an eighth mile track. I raced a Cadillac. I did, didn't didn't win, by the way. <laughs> With a Cadillac, didn't or you didn't? I didn't. No, we put a six ho- horsepower Honda motor, built a bar like a cart frame, and a, put a bar stool on it. The whole deal. I have pictures of it somewhere. Uh, it would lift the front, so we had to put wheelie bars on it. <laughs> and it was unfor- the way the. <laughs> Anyways, the way the brake ended up getting mounted, you would touch the brakes and it would, because it's such a short wheelbase, it would want to f- spin the cart. Yeah. So you had to like counter steer almost a, you know, a half You're right. Long. It was 96.5 miles per hour. That's still fast on a lawnmower. On a lawnmower. That's stupid is what it is. But yeah. they're more like, they're really go-karts. Yeah. Bobby Cleveland, 96.529 miles per hour. Hey, what's his nickname? He's got a nickname, right? Well, his name, Bobby Cleveland. His nickname's probably the uh, the lawnmower racer, lawnmower king, <laughs> lawnmower man, <laughs> the lawnmower man, dude. That's a messed up mower movie. man. Do you remember that movie? I do, but he no, has no idea. Yeah, that is a messed up movie, the lawnmower man VR. Yeah, weird stuff. Anyways, yeah. So the Fast with Finnegan was funny. Yes. Lawnmower racing. I would totally go to a lawnmower race. Yeah, like any of those like weird speedway racing thing, like demolition derby, figure eight racing, trailer racing, trailer racing. Yeah. Um, Skid plate racing, mm-hmm. lawnmower racing, like any of that stuff I would totally watch. It's super fun. Yeah. Speedway is fun. Caravan yes. racing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, where they have the, the trailers on the Motor. back. Yeah. They yeah. do. I don't I They used to do it, but I don't know if they still do. Maybe they do. The fairgrounds, they did a motorhome demolition they derby. They do. They do still they? do it. It's so much fun. Yeah. We've watched that a couple times. This last time we were, I think, in Palm Springs for the 4th of July, and it was that weekend. Oh, got it. So we weren't around to see it. I haven't been to the fair in a few years. 
Well, yeah, there's been a pandemic and stuff. Well, no, 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 I mean, even before that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I try to go to the things, but it doesn't always happen. Yeah. What are you pointing to? Grayson was pointing to some of the notes we had written. So, like, we, we well, tomorrow I'm getting my, 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 I'm getting my booster boosted. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm getting the, the new, uh, the new vaccine. Do you, is it still a deal? You just call them and make a thing and it's free? Yeah. Huh. Well, free with insurance. Well, before it was just they didn't even care. They didn't ask. Right, because the government was paying for it. Oh. This time, it's like it's it's free with your insurance. Oh, I see. So, yeah, Jeanette got hers on Friday. I, I'm getting mine tomorrow. Does she feel anything? Uh, she's got like a little like welt on her like arm, a little soreness. But, but she wasn't like, red. Yeah, she didn't get like. No, she's not like laid out yeah. or like any of the. Like some people were the first vaccines, right? You're getting feeling a little shitty. Yeah, but I think with like by the time you get the booster it's like no big deal right because your body's kind of already used to it and right. this is the second booster so it probably should be even less boosty boost yep yeah you ready to get out of here i think it's time oh he wants to play with the hoopties box he can but uh i think overall this is it's time it's time you yeah. want to call it that's it it's dead Boo. pull the trigger <laughs> it's flat line <laughs> all right y'all <laughs> bye later You've been listening to the Ungrown Ups Podcast, and for this, we apologize.